Hello. Y'all ready to bring the energy down? Oh, y'all should watch the vlog. I'm contractually obligated by my own conscience to tell you to watch the vlog. But yeah, how's everybody doing? I added um, background music. I got some good feedback. I appreciate everyone, uh, everyone's feedback. And honestly, like people, I, I was surprised, yes, on Tuesday that so many people stuck around and enjoyed it. I, I was very pleased to see that <laughs> it was a successful chill time for so many people. And I've done a few things to Golden VCR. In the meantime, oh no, wait, oh no, oh no, the chat, damn it, what? That can't be. I fixed it though. Refresh cache. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I absolutely fixed the chat. There was a clear bug. I found the bug. I fixed the bug. I think it was just caching the old version of the chat widget. We'll see. I can show you, I can show you the commit on GitHub where I fixed this. <laughs> yeah, it's really trippy, isn't it? Like it's still moving around, so you it you think it's actually real. Um, so if we get to 50 messages and it continues to work, then we're fine. I know that now. I'm just watching chat very suspiciously. <laughs> um, I'm never gonna get over this. I'm never, uh, months from now, I'll be so afraid of the chat widget. Um, here. Oh yeah, my chat widget doesn't have like the mod icons and things on it just because um, we're an egalitarian society here. Everyone is equal. So in addition to fixing the chat, though, one of the things I added since uh, last stream was on this page, it's a little hard to find at the moment, but if you find a tape on the tapes page, like like Discover England or Build Your Own Computer Desk that we've watched before, you get a link to the like details of the previous stream. So this was broadcast one that we did on Tuesday, and it shows you all the tapes. We streamed for three hours and 55 minutes. There was a fun bug here where it was like an eternity. Um, but one of the things I added here was a, this is pretty, pretty janky UI, but like it shows all of the ghosts that were sent in for each tape. So, a donut with a halo, a sad dripping donut inside a very wet jail cell, Jesus Christ eating a donut. There were some good ones in here. I liked um, pressure washers, dogs, and donuts turned out really well, I think. And then, um... oh boy, ah, more, more donuts. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I liked uh, Friendly Bobby's on Foot Patrol, how this one was just a little fun ghost costumes, and one of them says poot. Dogs on a riverboat was good. Anyway, um, these are, this is one of the features here now on the website. You can actually go through and look at these retro, retrospectively. Um, so yeah, I fixed the chat, I added that. And I fixed a bug here. And then I did, I did, <clears throat> I made the little ghost alerts a little more visible, like readable. Um, it kind of like fades to black behind them so you can see them better and they stay on screen a little bit, a little bit uh, longer. Uh, 
yeah, we can we can um, we can talk a little bit more about the ghosts in a bit. But right now, I think we should get into a tape. Uh, one of the fun things if about getting here early is you can you have the power to snipe the tape selection. You know, if you show up right when the stream starts and you're just like donut man quiet time, then there's a good chance I'll just play that tape for you. Your voice will be louder because there aren't as many people around. It's the democratic process at work. But for right now, <laughs> for right now, I think I think I got a short one here <clears throat> that we can start with. This is Breadman Video Manual, your guide to healthy bread baking. It came with the bread machine. It's also a very strange looking tape. Like this cassette design, you, there's no like window on it. It's a weird sort of plastic. It's got black reels, but it feels pretty light. I think it's like, you know, 15 minutes. I did not implement an easier way to give out points. Um, I can give, I can I can hand out some points Mardi Gras beat style in a in a little bit though. But right now, seal campaign. Huh? What's that about? Your guide to healthy bread baking. And let me just find this one. Boom. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. Ha! <laughs> I was on the wrong website. Bread. Hey, there it goes. It's time to learn about bread. We have figured out the chat is working, right? Somebody say something. <laughs> Help. Oh, wait, I need to open um, the video feed. Congratulations on your purchase of the Breadman Ultimate. Now you can have fresh baked breads in your own Hooray, home it's any working. time without the fuss and mess of traditional baking methods. Simply measure the ingredients, place them in the pan, and let the bread man do all the work. God, I love the this set. The bread man will mix, knead, rise, like and bake your jars bread. Jars of wheat. It has pre-programmable functions. Positioned around. So the bread man will also bake bread while you sleep or work. Your time is precious. Volume up, yes. You can have warm, fresh, healthy bread ready when you want it. The Breadman Ultimate combines the newest patented and versatile features, which allow you the flexibility to make the most varied breads, bread man. cakes, special doughs, it is bread even man. jam. In I turned it up a little. Does it need maker. to be up higher? Like a computer, this machine has many new programs, which you can set up in making your own perfect loaf of bread. Programmable That's bread why computer. they call this incredible home bread machine the Ultimate. At first, you may be surprised by the satisfying, rich flavor of these healthy breads, especially if you're not accustomed to eating whole grain foods. Do not foods. be alarmed the by the satisfying, rich flavor so delicious, of your bread You'll bread. think you've discovered a new food. In fact, you will find that many of the so-called health breads at the supermarket aren't all that healthy. Shortening, syrups, and sugars have often been added to enhance the flavor. For many of these breads to claim any food value at all, the flour has been enriched, with only a few of the 26 essential nutrients stripped from the grain during the milling process. When you read the labels of mass-produced bread, you will see that most bread flours are enriched with niacin, iron, thiamine, and riboflavin. The organic, whole grain, unbleached, unbromated flours have all the vitamins, minerals, and fiber just as nature provided. The bread man has been designed with special thought to the health conscious. It allows you to make whole grain know, natural want, breads want, which are high flavor. in complex carbohydrates, proteins, and fiber without unwanted preservatives, pesticide residues, bleached flour, stabilizers, or other additives found in mass-produced breads. With homemade bread, you control the ingredients to suit your taste and the personal dietary needs of you and your family. 
In fact, with the bread man bread maker, they're really um, you feel good about the great food you are They're really eating going heavy on the anti supermarket bread to propaganda. Mass produced bread again. Like this tape now came with the bread machine. <laughs> we already bought the bread, the bread machine. Ultimate. You'll notice that it's divided into several sections. An overview Basic baking techniques. I do think my mom had one of these, or at least this brand. Baking techniques. The tiny window However, on the door. This video is not a substitute a for the owner's bread washing manual. machine. Always read the owner's manual prior to operating this appliance. The Breadman Ultimate is loaded with features, including white bread, whole wheat bread, <laughs> loaf size choices one, one and a half, and two pound, sweet, fruit, nut, and herb breads, French, batter <laughs> breads and cakes, jam, French. bread dough. Pizza dough, crust color control for light, medium, and dark settings, patented extras this dispenser, is fully random. Such a random smattering of features. 24 hour delay bake timer, removable lid, removable lid, fully adjustable custom white program control, French, bake only with variable temperature control, and last but not least, five personal recipe settings. Now let's take a closer look at your new Breadman Ultimate. The Ultimate has four major wheel, parts. The removable the lid with oil. steam vent, window, and a patented extras dispenser. The non-stick horizontal baking pan, pan handle, and kneading blade. The inner case with heating element. The touch-activated control panel. Yes, it stored five control of the baking recipes. process in a simple, straightforward way. I guess mem memory was expensive Please read the instruction then. manual and save it for future reference. It has many tips, recipes, and fully detailed instructions for use of this product. Pay special attention to the important safeguards and safety tips found oh, on pages holy bread. two and three. One popular way to use your bread man at home is to use a bread machine bread mix available from the store. These mixes are formulated specifically for use in automatic bread makers. They come in a variety of whole wheat, multigrain, and other blends. Be sure the mix is for either a one, one and a half, or two pound loaf. For this machine, the maximum amount of flour used must not exceed four and a half cups. Read the instructions carefully and follow the measurements exactly. Let's show you how easy it is to bake bread. First, open the lid and remove the bread pan. Rinse it thoroughly before your first use. Place the kneading blade into the bottom of the baking pan and firmly fit it on the drive shaft. When baking with one of these mixes, measuring the correct amount of water is crucial. Use a measuring cup that is accurate and you trust. Measure the correct amount of water and pour it into the baking pan. Now open the large ingredient package and gently pour it on top. Remember, always put your wet ingredients in the pan first. The yeast always goes in last. Using your finger, make an indentation in the flour mix. Open the small yeast packet and carefully pour the contents into this pocket. The yeast must not touch the water. Early activation <coughs> of the yeast may give you unsatisfactory results. Yeah, I think that did it. I think I had to reload something, but now it. Place the baking French pan was back a little into the inner casing. Push the pan he down. He lingered into a little longer. It snaps into place. Now close the lid. Do not open the lid during the baking process. If you open it during baking, you will affect the baking temperature and your bread may not turn out as you'd like. If you'd like to check the progress of the bread, look through the window. Please don't touch the casing because it becomes hot. Also, By the way, the another thing like the pressure washer. The <laughs> this is normal. Horribly the burn you if you will touch it. As the baking continues. Let's look at the control panel. You'll find the select button. When you plug the Breadman Ultimate in, the white bread, two pound, medium crust setting automatically appears. If this is not the type or size of recipe you are baking, press select until press the type up, up, of bread down, down, on the left, display right, left, corresponds right, with the type start. of bread mix you have. Then press Use the select. loaf size control button to select the size of loaf you are preparing. The crust control button allows you to choose light, medium, or dark crusted bread. The rapid settings reduce the time when the dough rests and rises. Baking Do we need an approved can quickly. of gasoline Note, for the bread the mix? control selection may be set for the white, whole wheat, French, fruit and nut, or batter bread cycles. Once you've chosen the program, loaf and crust color, press start. The display will tell you how much time remains for the bread to finish, counting down every 60 seconds. The display will also tell you which cycle the machine is currently baking. That's it. In just a few hours, you will have delicious, fresh, home-baked bread. When the bread man is finished baking, it will chime. 
Remove the loaf pan using a good pair of Okay, I wasn't mitts. sure if it was open the lid, bread the man or still bread be hot. And lift the baking pan out. And it does sound like handle. he's saying bread man. Slide the loaf out onto a cooling rack. If you place the loaf directly on a flat, unventilated surface, I'm the crust will sweat and become soggy. Are you a breadman? If you forget to remove the bread right away, don't worry. There is an automatic cycle which gradually cools the bread down. Check the baking pan for the kneading blade. If it is missing, it is in the bottom of the loaf. When the bread has cooled, remove it carefully with plastic tongs. Do or not eat spoon. the large metal Never blade metal that's embedded in your loaf of bread. Baking pan. This is a non-stick surface and can be damaged by metal utensils or scouring pads. After the bread has cooled about 20 minutes, it is ready for slicing. For clean slices, it is best to use a bread knife with a long serrated cutting edge. Baking bread from scratch is one of the most rewarding cooking experiences. Working the dough, the aroma of the baking hearth have always been part of human life. With today's hectic lifestyles and the bread man, baking bread has become easy enough to do every day. Baking bread is an acquired skill. The subtleties of different grains and yeast, your altitude and the temperature and humidity of the day all have small effects Thank on the Thank God for the product. bread man. Some recipes are harder to master. Saves us from time modern and practice. Society. Anyone can make even the most specialized of breads successfully. In this section, we will focus on a bread that is healthful and tastes great. We will be making an extra large two pound loaf of honey whole wheat. Oh, honey whole wheat. We're not in front making of French. You before you start to assemble them, you will need one and one half cups of water, four and one quarter cups of 100% whole wheat bread flour. Two teaspoons of sea salt. <sighs> I love how they're showing all these like one beautiful loaves of bread. But yeah, Haley, Haley 92 oil, is right. You can only make cube bread cheese. with this thing. Remove the baking pan and make sure the kneading blade is in place. Like what a fine baguette the and hava loaf the baking pan. and nice the round loaf of bread in the background. The the none of which you can make in the breadman. Add the honey. Now add the oil. Canola oil contains no saturated fat and is preferable for healthy breads. Next, using a measuring cup designed for measuring dry ingredients, measure out the flour by spooning it into the cup, then leveling it with a knife. Scooping How are you spilling directly flour into the everywhere. Cup will overpack the flour. Measure the sea salt and add it to the mixture. Add the dry milk or whey. Whey contains less fat and is a perfect substitute for the whey. dry milk. If you can't find it, dry skim milk is next best. Now, make an indentation in the top of the flour mixture and place your yeast there. Return the baking pan into the oven compartment and fit it into place. No way. Close the lid. Press the select button until the whole wheat setting number appears. Then choose your crust color and loaf size and press start. Now you're done. The bread man takes over. With less than 10 minutes of prep time and no big messes or cleanups, you'll have the best homemade bread you've ever baked. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of potential. The Breadman Ultimate for has emotes several other features that make bread making in your home more convenient and flexible and than ever. Delay finish up to 24 hours. Dough only. Patented extras dispenser. Dough only. Batter bread. French and only. Cakes. Wheat only. Jams. Pizza dough. <laughs> Waking up to the aroma of fresh bread or cinnamon rolls in the morning what used seals? to be limited to special occasions or holidays. We haven't watched seals now, the bread man on has this made Twitch it channel. To wake up every day to this wonderful pleasure with its delay baking timer. You can prepare the ingredients in advance, turn the machine on, and the bread is ready when you want it, up to 24 hours in advance. Prepare your mix or scratch recipe as demonstrated earlier. Place the pan into the casing and close the lid. Select the proper settings for the bread you are making, and then uh, Donut Man is a strong contender up and for, down for the emotes. amount of time you would like to elapse between now and when you want the I bread finished. I mean, finish. Duncan, I guess. Duncan if really did like not bread, feature at 8 prominently tomorrow in morning, and it's 10 video. PM, push the arrow until 9:30 appears. That's the time difference. He was in none of the songs. He just had a little appearance for like As you see, 30 the seconds. Time advances in 10 minute and I read on Wikipedia that he was like made by a legit prop quickly. house. The down arrow will help you adjust the like time. Like he was downward. probably expensive. Now press start. The operation light will go on, and the preheat cycle will be indicated. Mm. England, yeah. I mean, England's got streams. The breadman can also help you with other baking chores. 
Making rolls or braided breads is possible using the bread man and a conventional oven. The bread man will mix, knead, raise your dough and tell you when it's ready. <laughs> to use the dough only feature, you better not mix your recipe flour. as we've talked about, then select the dough only setting. When the machine chimes that the dough is finished, remove the pan, then remove the dough from the pan. Form it into the desired shape and bake in a conventional oven according to the recipe. In the same way, this machine is ready to prepare pizza dough. Following your favorite recipe, the Ultimate will mix your dough and have it ready for you to hand roll, top, and bake in your oven. Extras dispenser. Oh, it's Some patented. Some recipes ask for the addition of fruits, nuts, herbs, and even veggies and cheese. Oh, my God. If these ingredients are added too early during kneading, they can break apart. So the Breadman Ultimate has a patented extras dispenser for adding these special ingredients. Uh. Prepare the complete recipe omitting the fruit or nuts. Place the fruit and nuts into the trapdoor compartment on the top of the <laughs> lid. Now select your cycle, then press start. Next, push the extras button and select add extras or no extras. Add is for adding those special extras. No will shut the dispenser off. Once the ad Do not open made, main lid until dispenser has activated and is empty. Two. I love how this is written this like time, Dan's broken picture phone prompts. Fall free into the bread pan and mix at the optimum moment of the knead cycle, resulting in a luscious fruit and nut bread. And you can also use the dispenser with the delay finish timer. You can also bake batter breads with the ultimate. All types of non-yeasted bread, such as zucchini, carrot, what a way or to hold a knife. Breads. Just measure and add the ingredients. Select the batter bread cycle on the display, then crust color, and press start. I just like to keep some raisins and walnuts in there, just just to in case. To top off that perfect slice of freshly baked bread, your bread man makes the tastiest of homemade jams. Simply follow the instructions in the owner's manual and let the bread man do all the work. Wait, this bread maker makes jam? Is that what he said? The Breadman Ultimate has a custom program button which that allows like you to a great way to get your non-stick bread pan and baking real, real times in the pre-programmed cycle. This gives you the opportunity to experiment and refine your results based on the type of flour or yeast you are using. It also lets you factor in humidity and room temperature, the types of influences which Coward's can affect the bread. Show us the jam setting. Say you have a specially milled flour and you'd like the dough to rest, knead, or proof longer to maximize the flavor or texture of the bread. Custom program is easy to master. Simply press the program button after you select the bread type. The ultimate will cue you step by step. Perhaps you want to preheat the ingredients for 10 minutes. Just press the up arrow button until it reaches 10 minutes. Once this is done, simply press program again and the need one function will appear. If the time is okay with you and doesn't need to be adjusted, press program and move on to need two. If you want time here to decrease, you may do so by pressing the down so arrow. So while we learn more about bread, minutes. does anyone want some golden Follow BCR Follow this process five through points. the steps of the cycle, adjusting where you wish. After all of the steps have been programmed, you can also program in extras, press extras if you want them, and adjust the baking temperature. The baking temperature is set to the optimal Fahrenheit temperature for the type of bread, so adjust with this in mind. To finish up, press program one last time and the screen will prompt you for save or erase. Press yes okay, and then start okay. if you're ready to bake. Press yes if you simply want to program. Press no if you want to start over. Don't worry, you won't erase the master framework program. It's still in the memory. And if you hit erase yes, you'll see that the screen returns to the normal cycle times. Genesis, yes. Rene. Bake only has variable time and variable temperature. You can now bake a dough which was pre-made or purchased at the store. Or Tanner perhaps five a iron. recipe calls Thank for the, the dough to rest ball. in the refrigerator for an extended time. Here's some Simply select the amount for you. of time you need um, to bake, up to one hour and thirty minutes. Then adjust the temperature range oh my God. from right. two yeah, hundred to three hundred and seventy five degrees. I gotta get a better way of doing this. <laughs> Press start. But I am going through every one by one. Bakers, the spy, ultimate uh, has five personal recipe memory cells. This means you have five personal memories to program and save for your best favorite recipes. Again, personal recipe lets you be as creative as you need to be. 
If you want the dough to knead for 20 minutes, degas for 10 seconds, and rise for an hour, just program in the numbers. If you want to skip a phase, press the arrows until you hit zero. Then press program and move on to the next phase of the baking program. Follow the instructions for save, erase, as with the custom programs. If you wish to make filled breads, pull apart rolls, braided bread, score the top of the loaf or add seeds to the crust, this can now be done with the Breadman Ultimate's pause feature. It is similar to the pause button on your VCR. By pressing down on the pause button for about two seconds, the cycle will pause real hard on these for points. approximately 10 minutes. Here is an easy demonstration to make a filled loaf. After the second punch down, I'm no longer paying attention pause to bread. And remove the dough. Roll the dough into a rectangle. Cover the dough with sliced sun-dried tomatoes, goat cheese, basil, rosemary, and a drizzle of good olive oil for a delicious Mediterranean bread. Simply roll up the dough, tuck in the ends, and return to the baking pan. Push the pause button again, and the cycle will restart where you left off. By the way, if you forget to push pause after 10 minutes have elapsed, the bread man will automatically restart where you stopped. To add decorative or flavorful toppings to your loaf's crust, it isn't even necessary to remove the dough. Simply pause the machine as shown, lift the lid using an oven mitt, and baste with olive oil or an egg white wash and top with poppy, sesame, or caraway seeds, or score the dough for a beautiful rustic style crust. Okay, if hooray. Baking, your home if you ask for points, you should have points now. pulls the plug, the Ultimate has an internal backup that picks up baking at the exact spot what in the I cycle miss? where power was he lost. He said something about filled bread. If power is not restored within one hour, we recommend that like you bake another with jam, like a jelly donut. Can you make jam in the bread? The guideline should always be followed if you're baking with eggs, milk, and butter, make a loaf, cheese. and have it fill it. Oh, God. Cleanup is easy with the bread man. If needed, wipe out the baking <laughs> pan bomb. with soapy water and a soft sponge. Again, never use scouring pads or metal utensils because they ruin nonstick finishes. <laughs> if you drip something on the unit itself or inside the baking chamber, let the machine cool completely. Make sure the machine is unplugged. Then using a damp, soft sponge, wipe the The breadman away. will burn and electrocute well, you. Well, there you have it. Healthy home bread making is now at your fingertips. We hope you enjoy years of this natural nutrition for you and your family. Using a broad selection of the finest recipe ingredients, you and the bread man are now in charge of your own healthy bakery. For more information about this machine or to purchase any of these fine bread man accessories, call toll free 1-800-233-9054 or visit our website at www.salton-maxim.com. Oh, we got a website address. Salton. Is that the parent company of Breadman? Okay, it was 19... Yeah, that was on the tape. We knew that. 1998. Yeah, you and the, you and the Breadman are partners in crime. <laughs> You're going to save your family from the evils of uh, riboflavin. What a beautiful Breadman that was. Breadman Ultimate, your guide to healthy bread making. Did we do it? We did it. Rewind, right. I w yeah, I was... Um, our pal Joshy D was in here yesterday, and he mentioned um, apparently it's some sort of... People say... Some people say you, um, you should let your tapes cool before you re rewind them. Like if you have a, if your VCR is hot and the tape is hot, then that'll that can stretch the tape. I don't know if that's true or if that's just um, like hobbyists getting way too into something and making up making up rules. But anyway, thanks for watching, Breadman. I'll go ahead and rewind this one, at least a little bit. Put your, put your tapes in an ice bath after watching them. Like boiling eggs. Donut man. Oh, no, no, no. I ha There is no... Like, ultimately, I want people to be able to use 
Golden VCR fun points or bits or whatever to um, like vote on tapes to be watched. But for right now, it's entirely at my discretion. So we're not watching Donut Man. <laughs> but uh, if there's something that y'all want to watch, take a peek. Let me know. Just as a review, if you go to goldenvcr.com, y'all may know this already, but if you go to goldenvcr.com, you can log in with Twitch. That'll connect your Twitch account and let you view your balance of Golden VCR fun points. You can also select favorite tapes, or you can just browse the entire collection and see what looks interesting to you and what you want to watch. We got a bunch of stuff in here. So, hmm. Kittens and Caboodle. Uh, growing up while Kittens and Caboodle was a. Um, was shouted out by several people last stream. So I think that's, yeah, probably a good one to do. It's 30 minutes. We can meet Madison the Purple Cat, who will help us learn about cats. Oh. Donut Man versus Bread Man. <laughs> The other thing is, um, if you go to the homepage of goldenvcr.com, if you're logged in and you have fun points, you can send ghosts to the VCR. Um, just note that, like, if you write something objectionable, it'll reject it, and you won't lose points in that case. And if you're, like, uh, a man shaking hands with a bread man. Okay, well, this one's working. <laughs> But um, if you get a, you you might get an error that's that's really long and just says like a bunch of cryptic stuff about 429 rate limit exceeded yada yada. That just means that you have to wait and try again because oh yep rate limit exceeded for images per minute. We're, I'm only allowed to do five images and it's four images per alert. So uh, if multiple people are trying to do this at the same time, you have to wait a minute and try again. Anyway, yeah, kittens and caboodles. That sounds good. Let me get that one off the shelf. Oh my god, there's a quiz on the back, too. The answers are upside down. Don't cheat. Do cats see well in the dark, yes or no? I wish we had access to Twitch polls, so we could, or predictions, so we could <laughs> predict the answer to that question. We'll be right back. Get in the tape. Wait, which one is this? Tape 18. Be right back with tape 18. This tape was on the shelf right next to Donut Man after school. A boy, yeah. It looks more like a Illuminati meeting held by the bread men that rule the world. Here we go. Kittens and caboodles. I guess the I guess that's the kitten, and these are the caboodles. Growing up wild. Oh, it's a Time Life video. BBC Lionheart Television. Produced in 1992. Cool. Let's go for it. I'm so glad the chat is working now. That makes things a lot um, easier on my sanity. Redman out. Kittens in. And we'll just... Oop. Here we 
you go. Y'all ready for kittens? Hope this wasn't this one doesn't get caught in the VCR and eaten. Because the puppies one sure was. Uh ignore this part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is this banjo kazoo? Okay, this is feeling a little loud, isn't it? That's loud, yeah, okay. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit more. Kittens and caboodles. How's this cat's Madison? How's that for volume? Of cool. Treat him right, cause his remote control rule. Got a Cheshire cat smile on his purple face, cause today shows about the whole feline race. On the plains of Africa, you'll see some quick cats. Cheetahs who are as fast feline as cars. Feline race is more of a social construct than anything. Leopards who hide their food in an incredible place. And lions, the king of the beasts. Is this whole thing gonna rhyme? In the deep dark jungles of South it. America and Asia, you'll spot some nearly invisible cats, like the jaguar. Ferocious tigers with stripes. And an awesome ocelot, the sneakiest cat in the trees. I really wanna get a subscription to zoo books now. And even There's in just your something about this. you'll meet some amazing cats. They come in all sizes and colors. Recognize any of these guys? Always remember, this fluffy little family cat is still a great big tiger at heart. Ooh, I want the tiger poster. From the tiniest tabby in your alley to the biggest cats in the jungle, all cats are part of one big family. Meet the family. That's some family portrait. Lions like to live in large family groups. I appreciate the hand-drawn animation. And there are the lots and lots of lionesses, and the cat lions segments. and cubs. House cats live in families just like their wild cousins. You already know the little ones are called kittens. But did you know these little fluff balls can be ready to move out on their own in just six weeks? Ever tried to scratch your ear like that? Okay, which cats leave their on babies the with a babysitter? Stay with mom for nearly a Leopards, year a lions, half. or cheetahs? Vote now. Smile. There's the proud mama of the pride. And that's the pride's proud papa. You can tell because he's the one with a fuzzy neck called a mane. When he talks, everyone listens. The mother lion can have one to three cubs in a litter. When her Lions seem up, terrifying. They home, but they do visit once in a while. I mean, I guess we have lions in America. You gotta watch out for, for pumas. The females never leave the prime. They just seem so good at killing. Because someone needs to take care of the new cubs. On the other hand, or paw, this cheetah raises her cubs all by herself. She can have up to eight cubs, so she can be pretty busy until they move out. Yeah, I don't think this... Yeah, poles don't work These until two you get affiliated. around. Well, I love the silly sound effects. All aboard! Yeah, I just remember when I when I lived in uh, like Southern California, I'd go out walking, I'd go out for hikes all the time, and you do have to it's think about mountain lions. Bathing all those cubs. She's only got one tongue. They they're very good at stalking, and they can 
Where's just Pop? follow well, you and you'll never know they were there loner. until it's too late. They like to roam away from home. But like most wildlife, ah, there he is. On the safety stuff. Just make a lot of noise. That's better. Mom has all the cubs squeaky clean. But that spiked hair looks like a punk cut. <laughs> On the move. Mom's just taking the cubs for a stroll. But believe me, when they have to, lions can really move fast. But lions aren't the fastest But cat. which cat runs the fastest, lion, cheetah, or tiger? Sorry, Mom. In a sprint, this leopard is faster. But the cheetah takes the prize. Just watch. Do not attempt to outrun a cheetah. When a lion spots lunch, she kicks into gear at up to 25 miles per hour. Leopards clock in at an amazing 36 miles per hour. But the cheetah is the fastest animal on four legs. If we didn't slow her down, you might not see her at all. She just went over the speed limit at 60 miles per hour. That's one super fast cat. <laughs> This cat may not be a jack-in-the-box, but these backyard leapers can hop. You can tell that Wild Vision slash BBC Lionheart can you jump that had a great time working on this. Okay, are you a better climber There's than a lion? Clearly, a lot of fun. Probably. They're having with the editing and nicely sound claws. effects. Lions aren't really made for climbing, but I'm not going to try and tell them that. Mom's playing leapfrog. But who's the ultimate climbing machine? It's the leopard. She can easily outclimb a lion, and that lets her hide food in a very odd place, way up high in the trees. Sorry, this tree's taken. That leopard got the lion's share. Guess he'll have to find another table. Wow, Junior sure got to the top fast. Someone must have yelled lunch. I wonder what mom's serving today. Macaroni and cheese? Madison's got a riddle. <laughs> what is this cat Thanks, doing Salto. with a kitten in her mouth? The same as this ocelot. Also, oh no, oh another ocelot. Home. Can you count the kittens? It looks like the ghost That's alerts one. are currently not working. <laughs> 502 bad gateway. Two. Oh, the ride was a bit bumpy, but everyone is safe and sound. I think that's Playtime. just the API I'm using to What's generate the images. Maybe it's down. It's mom's tail. Because my stuff is Ouch. working fine. The best thing about having a tail for a toy is you never ever lose it. But sometimes <laughs> it seems to have a mind all its Anti -ghost own. Anti-ghost DRM. Do you know why cats wag their tails? The tail tells you whether a cat is playful or just mad. That'll teach him to stick his tongue out. All cubs and kittens love to play, but wrestling is one of their favorite This games. is a great slice of pre-internet sure no cat video. This is This is important training for a cub. This is kind of just the primordial cute cat video. Back in my day, if we wanted to see a cat being cute, we had to buy a videotape. Put it in our VCR. School days. Look, some scary caracos learning the thrill of the chase. Sorry, guys. Teacher's pets studied harder. Those things look really Here's cool. Here's kindergarten. First we stalk. Then we bite. Then we grab. Hold on. A pounce. 
A hold. He's down for the count. Give that cub an A+. Plus. Even with kittens, it's a jungle out there. Looks like fun. Unless you're the one on the bottom. This calico cat is stalking something in the backyard, over in the tall grass. She's on the scent of something, just like her African cousin, stalking prey. Gotcha! What do you think this lioness is hunting? Wildebeest. It may look like she's racing them, but she's deciding which one to take home for lunch. Brr, this chilly sight is a lynx, and he's hunting rabbit. Snowshoe rabbit, that is. I wonder if that disguise is going to work. Ah, guess he wore his lucky rabbit's feet. This is some good. Video no game rabbit music. stew for this cat tonight. Oh well, back to the old drawing board. <laughs> Learning the hard way. These huge cape buffalo have really sharp horns. They may not look very smart, but they're more Those than a cats. match for the king of the beasts. Will this lion ever learn that curiosity can kill the cat? Those buffalo aren't kittens or caboodles. As a team. Those are buffalo. Or they can go one-on-one -on -one with a lion who still doesn't get the point. pesky lions ever learn that sometimes even the best hunter has to know when he can't win. God, the African savannah is such a wild place. There's herds time. of walking meat freezers that How do defend eat? themselves violently. Right. They start by feeding on their mother's milk. Dinner's always ready whenever mom's around. It also keeps these cubs safe, right next to mom. Even when she's I appreciate all the fun facts. From a quick snack. Do you think there's it does add a layer of uh, extra supplemental information that I think is This baby is very helping mom with his paws. That keeps the milk flowing. Kittens will even do that to you. When they get older, they'll get an itch for something meatier, just as their teeth grow longer. This lion cub's a vegetarian. Not. Not. He killed that thing he's eaten. And this cheetah cub is trying out his brand new set of choppers on his first really big bite. Save some for this guy. <laughs> That's a great flesh eating Here's sound effect. When a cat nips dinner, what's a cat nip with? Does that answer your question? Cats have special sharp teeth to do the trick. Tigers have the biggest teeth of all. Hey, who's walking on the TV? Well, this might be a good place to talk about paws. Paws? When you're little, paws can be big and clumsy, but they sure come in handy. Oh, it's working Here's one again. Cat who uses Hooray, paws thank you for the water buffalo. Beehive. Hope she doesn't get stung. Saved by the Madison. I have a pause button. That's not a cat either. That's a fish. What's going on here? Okay, is this a kitten or a caboodle? Paws are also perfect for a little fishing, but not <laughs> if you're a goldfish. Cat this fishing. cat is going for the gold. Rats. Well, maybe there's some canned goldfish at home. 
How do cats care for their precious paws? By destroying Cows your furniture. Like this Berman. And jungle cats like this Jeff Royce cat use scratching posts wherever they find them. When a cat scratches, he leaves his own scent, a mark of his mischief. Was Some that a scratching sound effect or a leaving your door. scent Just sound watch. effect? Oh, that's Anyone adorable. Home? All right, that was worth, that made the whole 30-minute tape worth Better it. Better try again. That cat knows how to knock on a door. That's better. See? <laughs> I just love how they're dubbing in the most dramatic sound effects. Mischief like the time. door opening. A fish, which is a water buffalo. A surefire formula for mischief. It is, is a water a kitten, buffalo in some A circles. goldfish bowl and a high shell. It's almost asking for trouble. Okay, more terrorizing fish. Aha! Caught red-handed. Oh no! A catastrophe! <laughs> Saved by the bed. Is that a giant plush koala? Let's see that one again. Do you know why cats usually land on their feet? It's because they always twist their back the feet are at the air. bottom. That way, they don't get hurt. Howdy, Mayor Rails. Yeah, we're learning about kittens, kittens and caboodles. Some of Madison's wildcat cousins There's sport gonna be permanent a quiz spots. At the end. Cheetah spots are little dots. Jaguar spots are big black dots. And this wild cat has lots of spots. Do you know why lots of cats have spots and dots? To help them hide. It's camouflage. Spotty cats blend into the background, almost invisible. Now you see them, now you don't. This means mom and the kids can hide safely in the grass. We're learning about uh, wild cats, house cats, and fun early Check 90s out the spike sound effects. On those cubs. This one has good music. Would your mom let you wear your hair like that, Punker? If she were a spotty cheetah, she would. Can you spot the baby leopard in this picture? There it is. This is like a System Shock soundtrack song. I love this. Those spots really work. What would you wear if you wanted to hide? If you were a tiger, you'd wear stripes to blend into the trees. That way, tigers can sneak around without being seen when they're on the prowl. But they have to keep it down. Is Mom 3 what the kids are calling it these days? It does. I, I, do, I do hear that, too. In of South America live a ton of amazing animals. Beautifully colored birds that preen. Red-eyed frogs whose eyes turn green. Hummingbirds who pick flowers clean. <laughs> and small spotted cats with eyes that gleam. Jaguars have nearly invisible dots. That cat could kill me. That cat couldn't. I could take that cat. Margays and beautifully spotted ocelots. Wait, now it's ocelot. A second ago it was ocelot. You already know why cats need camouflage. Redman? It helps them hide ocelot. from other animals. But it also helps them hide from people. For thousands of years, people needed furs to keep warm. It's all they had. But today, we have all kinds of clothing to keep us warm. So we can leave this fur coat on the ocelot. And that's good news to this cat.
bath time. <laughs> All right, everybody, These it's bath time. Having a great time, splishing and splashing. My favorite around. segment on the Golden Beast cool. stream. Nothing like a nice mud bath. We still haven't learned whether cats can see well in the dark. Or did we? Imagine yourself as a lion cub on a hot day. You'd take a dip, too. You'd shake yourself off, just like a dog. Then fluff dry in the breeze. You're a cool cat at last. But cats don't use water to keep clean. They use their tongues. A cat's rough tongue acts as a brush and comb. Sometimes, cats help clean each other. It's a way of saying hello. But don't try it on your friends. Grooming keeps their overcoats think nice and shiny. Cat's not liking water is a misconception a that was popularized by Garfield, probably. It's also a way for mom to tell which cubs are hers. She covers them with her scent. Hope she doesn't lick the spots off. Also, wild cats don't even like lasagna. But there's nothing like a it's friendly only domestic cat cats to like make lasagna. a cat purr. Bedtime. That's no growl. Open wide and say, ah. It's time, he thinks, for a cat nap and... 40 winks. Ocelot, revolver ocelot, nice. An ocelot, which is a cat. Uh-oh. This cub didn't see mom's do not disturb sign. She has to rest because lions need almost 20 hours of sleep a day. Someone better settle down or there won't be any bedtime story tonight. Story time. Once upon a time, 4,000 years ago, in ancient Egypt, the I think Egyptians it was ancient grew lots of America, food. though. Do you know who the grain attracted? You guessed it, mice. Not one or two or three. We're talking thousands. Those mice ate so much grain, people were going hungry. What could the poor Egyptians do? They brought in cats, wild cats. Then do you know what happened? That's I'm really right. vibing to this. The cats caught all the mice. This ancient Near Eastern From then music. On, it was considered good luck to have a cat in the house. Have you ever wondered why house cats chase mice? It's the call of the wild. They'll chase mice even though they aren't hungry. A mouse, which is it? a cat. That's a mouse with a bunch of cats. But he'll be okay. Thank you for the mouse ghost. Because these cats grew up with him. So they treat him like one of the family. Lucky mouse. We're going out to the cat more. Nightlife. <sighs> Bedtime. Don't forget to put the cat out. <laughs> Isn't it strange? The time we go to sleep There's is the been... time most cats go out on the prowl. We've only had two streams so far and watched like six tapes. And there's been so much you know good midi sacks so far. It's because the backs of their eyes have... The VHS era was a which beam light back <clears throat> rich gold mine of midi sacks. The stealthy cat slips out by night. His high beam eyes reflect the light. On padded feet, he stalks the town. He scales the walls, then slithers down. With hearing sharp and whiskers tuned, 
He finds his way through midnight gloom. He braves the nighttime weather cold. No scaredy cat, this feline bold. Down endless stairs and darkened way, he hunts for unsuspecting prey. At midnight tracking, he's the best. He puts his nine lives to the test. A lonely hunt this cat prefers for hidden rodents, sleeping birds, cross gratings, sidewalks, empty lots, the next night's hunting plan he plots. Then to the roof where moonlight seeps, he waits for morning, then he sleeps. Many wild cats hunt at night. Do you remember where the Mark A lives? That's right, the I jungle, the, the where they spend most of the nights climbing and hunting cats. for moths. Whoa, nice save. Mother Margay has perfected night hunting with her excellent eyesight and sense of smell. And her jumping's pretty sharp, too. It's a really good jump sound effect. Hmm. That's what a cat sounds like. Morning already. Would you like an elephant for an alarm clock? After a long night's hunt, Mom spends a little of the cool morning playing with her cubs. We know the thanks are there in your heart, Trill. <laughs> oh man, I could make a... I, I have my own like chat agent that's running in the Twitch chat to, to give me this chat overland stuff. And I could, I could set it up so that it, anytime anyone begins a message that starts with fun fact, it just automatically grabs it and like adds it to a database of fun facts. Like the same way that the ghost alerts are cataloged for each tape, when you look at the broadcast history, you could get a list of fun facts and who wrote them. That might be good. That looks like a pretty great life. Learned a lot? Okay. Who's the best <laughs> climber? Right, the leopard. How do cats manage to land on their feet? Because they can twist their backs in midair. We covered that, yeah. They can twist. Why do cheetahs need spots <laughs> The automatic thanks might be a lot. <laughs> And who do wild cats act like? That little kitten in your lap. He's really wild at heart. I hope you liked the show. Madison thinks it was the cat's meow. <laughs> I like this drum beat, along with the like banjo kazooie in 64 instruments. Watch for Madison and his magic zapper. He'll pop up again with a whole world full of animal friends for you. We'll be rolling, running, and swimming together real soon on your growing up wild adventures. Yeah, somebody, I forget who somebody mentioned seeing like this is a series that aired on Animal Planet or something. Growing up wild. Wild vision.
time life video. Yeah, that was that was uh that was really cute, fun, lighthearted, good sound effects. What did everybody think? If you could take one tape to a desert island and it had to be either Breadman or Cats, which would you choose? <laughs> Big beautiful cats. Donut man. Becca, there's mmm. Mmm. There are more Donut Man tapes. And we're not going to watch anymore until I'm able to create a financial incentive <laughs> that will lure people into supporting Donut Man. Uh, oh! That's right, I forgot. Which cats leave their babies with a babysitter? Leopards, lions, or cheetahs? I don't remember the answer to that. A, B, or C? Leopards, lions, or cheetahs? I mean, if you send me a Donut Man tape, I'll be <laughs> obligated to, to play it. Uh, it's... A. No, wait. B. <laughs> it's lions. It's lions. Which cat runs the fastest? Lion, cheetah, or tiger? You know this. You know this class. It's Cheetah. Which cat is known as the king of the beasts? Tiger, leopard, or Leo? Lion. It's Lion. Come on. First people to have cats as pets. Romans, Americans, or Egyptians? It was Egyptians. Which cats like to swim? Tigers, lions, or ocelots? I think that was ocelots, right? No. <laughs> no, it was tigers. Apparently tigers like to swim. And the most important question, do cats see well in the dark? Yes or no? What do you think? Yes or no? I'll give you a hint. It's yes. More reasons that Steve and George physically cannot watch this stream. I leave everything on autofocus. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to like, hey. No, over here, face. Hey, there we go. <sighs> okay. I hope you all enjoyed Kittens and Caboodles. What else we got? I mean, this is, hey, this is the Logitech Brio. It's 4K. It's doing, like, it does 60 FPS when the lighting is good. And I don't have any lights on me. I have an overhead dome light. You can see, like, my stuff back there. It's great. Painting the lighthouse? Um, I'm really intrigued by this one, actually. Yeah, I'm... I'm super, I'm a little leery about um, copyright. Surely pure danger is not like a property with a lot of, um, a lot of legal weight behind it. This is uh, like an uh, almost two hour feature film and I don't want to watch it right now, but I am really intrigued by pure danger. <laughs> the diamonds were hot. And dreams just became deadly. When a bag of diamonds suddenly falls into the hands of a short order cook and his waitress girlfriend, the pair think their hard times are over. But their dreams turn into a high speed, non stop nightmare as two very angry, very nasty groups of thugs. Led by short tempered Mr. De Palma, played by Michael Russo, and the cold hearted Felix. Played by an actor who just wanted to be credited by the name Leon. <laughs> ah, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of car chases and explosions. 
I'm excited for that one at some point. Yeah, the diamonds were hot. You see, so you would expect the second part of the tagline, <clears throat> after the diamonds are hot, to be something that contrasts with diamonds or has something to do with heat. But nope. The diamonds were hot. And dreams just became deadly. Okay. This background song that I got uh, is pretty short loop, so we should probably find another tape to watch. Any other ideas? I picked out a few in my favorites list. We watched Kittens and Caboodles. We watched Breadman. Lighthouse Painting. See, I'm really intrigued by William J. McCorkle's government options. How you can go from busboy to millionaire. Like William J. McCorkle. And his blonde 90s girlfriend and his blazer. But I also I also do like the idea of painting the lighthouse. That one seems chill. There's also another one. I think it's a not like one of the rare kid oriented videos that isn't overtly Christian that I have called Look Mom, I Have Good Manners. It's only 23 minutes long and it will teach you how to have good manners. So that's what I'm thinking. Where we want do we want <clears throat> Look Mom, I Have Good Manners? Do we want Painting the Lighthouse? Or do we want William J. McCorkle's Government Auctions? Tell you what, let's do a short one. Let's do either Look Mom or William J. McCorkle. And then we'll do the painting one. We got, we got auctions, 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 auctions. Okay. Let's meet Mr. William J. McCorkle. Where are we at? He was convicted of fraud? Oh my god. I'm sorry, I didn't get the whole Wikipedia article spiel there. I'm really excited for William J. McCorkle to enter our lives. Tape 78. Be right back. William J. McCorkle's Government Auctions. Learn how to buy boats, homes, and cars. William J. McCorkle from Busboy to Millionaire. <laughs> Is it Fraud Man or Fraudman? I'm William J. McCorkle and I'm a Fraudman. William J. McCorkle's Government Auctions. Use this video cassette to learn fascinating and informative facts about the world of government auctions. William J. McCorkle will show you how to make the most of his little-known profit-making opportunity so that you can join the ranks of ordinary people making their dreams come true. The, the puppy tape that got eaten, um, that's on my to-do list, is like coming up with a way to mark things as dead or whatever or uh, watched in their entirety. Um, yeah, there's that's not noted anywhere on the on the website, but it should be at some point. All right. McCorkle time. Here we go. Listen, Golden VCR does not show up. Oh, are they going to divide Golden VCR does not advocate fraud or get rich quick schemes, really, at all. Um, oh, we are rewinding. Previous owner of William J. McCorkle's tape was not kind. Imagine that.
someone listening to a fraudster and trying to get rich quick doesn't think about his fellow man when he takes the videotape out of the VCR. Let's bring back our rewinding music. Yeah, sadly, the um, the ghost alerts aren't working. <laughs> it's very spotty. I'm using uh, I'm using an image generation API that is has very variable um, reliability. <laughs> if it's getting used a lot, it stops working. Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna reset the tape counter and. You up, William J. McCorkle. Let's learn what wisdom he has to share with us. This is The Good Life. We invite you to okay. join with us over the next few minutes and learn how you can become independently wealthy using a few well-tested proven techniques which will put you on the road to achieving your financial independence. It takes little or no money, requires no credit, and anyone can do it in There's their spare time. Sucker born Just every minute. Hours a month. That's all it takes. Is it named the William J. McCorkle? Learn how to profit at U.S. government auctions of cars, right. boats, planes, jewelry, electronics, and other valuable personal property and real estate. And you can start right away. Hi, I'm William McCorkle. I've already shown you how to become successful in making money using my system with Bargain Real Estate. Today, I'm going to show you how to find bargains at government auctions. We're going to show you how to purchase beautiful cars, beautiful houses. We're going to show you how to make some fantastic deals. In the next few minutes, I'm going to take you into a live seminar conducted by one of the country's foremost so experts on government auctions. His name 90s. is Steve Steiner. Steve is an authority and specializes in drug-related seizures. And you'll be amazed to hear about some of the stories, items that were picked up for pennies on the dollar. The major money-making topics he'll be covering include thousands of unadvertised <laughs> government auctions held daily, insider secrets on how to be the winning bidder, and how to use my money to purchase these items. So let's join Steve now as he reveals the winning strategies on how to make money. There are over 4,000 DEA and federal marshals and court-ordered sales every day in the United States, many right here in this area. Too many! For you to attend. This isn't and that's a just super the long the tape, iceberg. but I'm pretty sure that's Anyone all the McCorkle we were going to get. <laughs> auctions, as you'll soon see. He just Whether put his name on this years old or recording of Steve years Steiner's old, lecture. You need no cash and no credit. You just have to know how to find these government auctions. Oh, we do need to, to, we do need to get a pyramid how do you scheme find these for Golden VCR. They used to be in the newspaper, and there'd be large ads, government auctions, such and such, uh, drug seizures. Nowadays, you don't see those ads like you used to. Why don't we see those ads? Because William J. McCorkle bought all the stuff. Drug use has stopped. <laughs> no, okay. We don't see the ads because the United States Congress, through the Graham Rudman Hollings Deficit Reduction Act, cut the budget for government programs. One thing they cut was advertising, because they didn't want to cut their own salaries and benefits. That, that's why. It's great for us because if they advertised these auctions, it would attract more so people. So we got to figure out, yeah, they how does William J. McCorkle benefit from this? They get higher prices for the merchandise. If we're the suckers. The result cutting down the advertising, fewer people at the auction. Is that good for us? How does our you being suckered is. in After all, if nobody knows benefit about them William except J. McCorkle. the people who learn about them from us, we have very little competition. We can bid very low, and we can pick up the merchandise we want at the right prices. This is one of the most worthwhile success strategies available in today's economy. Government auctions like the United States Marshal's Office, the United States Customs Sales, Internal Revenue Service, Drug Enforcement Seizures, what and is, other who, governmental auctions who made this such slide? as the GSA, bankruptcies, Department of Defense, police and sheriff sales, probate sales, tax sales, <laughs> the, the Golden VCR Fund Points, points SBA, Pyramid Scheme. VA, HUD, FHMA and the RTC. There are over yeah, a I guess. Dozen I mean, so yeah, he's McCorkle is getting a cut from selling the tapes of this lecture that he has nothing to do with. And police departments, which conduct what we call opportunity auctions. 
our students and business associates have found that at many of these auctions, for literally a few cents on the dollar, you can pick up some absolutely amazing buys. In today's auction market, drug seizures alone provide exotic cars, luxury yachts, and fast airplanes, including some of the fanciest and most expensive varieties. Items of conspicuous consumption, which drug dealers take their pride in spending their excess wealth on. Sometimes they own them for a very short period of time before their excesses become very clear to governmental authorities. Once they're apprehended, the federal agents have the right to seize any and all of these items. They can put them on the auction block and sell them for a few cents on the dollar, which goes into Uncle is Sam's that, pocket. Is that civil forfeiture? So I say we should support Are we talking about civil forfeiture here? Programs by providing the few cents on the dollar <laughs> that like... these items can be bought for. We'll take a few cents out of our pockets. We'll have some Ooh. fun and do things. I mean, that we Steven enjoy Steiner and fraud money. in the same so sentence. Your dreams and financial goals makes me highly will suspect that it reality. is this guy. <laughs> Most people don't even know if he's about these around with William, William Many, J. as you will see, are not even advertised. You need to start to take advantage of some of these incredible opportunities now. The next sale that I'm going to talk about is the mother, or you can call it the grandmother, of all sales. And guess what? She's three years old. This is the 1988 National Asset Seizure Forfeiture Act, NASAF, N-A-S-A-F. So this is circa 1991. I don't think we had a... This sale is conducted yeah. by federal marshals. The Comprehensive Crime the Control Act of 1984 gave the government the right not only to seize the assets and items used in the commission of a crime, but also the assets acquired with the proceeds of criminal activity. That act was followed by the 1988 NASAF Act. Does anybody here remember the first... NASA yeah, it's fraudsters all the way down. The term zero tolerance, strike a bell. Okay. They found a piece of one marijuana cigarette on somebody's yacht, and they seized the entire yacht. The owner alleged that it had belonged to a departed passenger oh. who was on the boat two weeks ago, and he didn't even know who it was. Did it help him? Yeah, speak of the devil, Snowbox. <laughs> there was one and a half billion dollars of such assets seized by the U.S. government in 1985. In 86, it had grown to 3.1 billion. In 87, 7 billion. But in 1988, when they passed the NASF Act, whereby in drug seizures, they eliminated the loophole that, that if you had whatever given amount, however many bags, people were contending that they weren't really dealers. If you they commit a misdemeanor, personal, the government can seize use. your yacht and sell it for five amount. cents to William J. McCorkle. Or controlled or illegal substances on your person, your car, your boat, oh my your God. plane. They could not only seize McCorkle your car, your boat, or your McCorkle and Steiner plane, were arranged together. Home or other assets or anything United that States had any relation or involvement with drugs. Anything that had anything to do with it or anything that had anything to do with you. In 1988, these seizures increased to 19. We have not done HTML. Billion dollars. I think I might do HTML this, this Saturday. This type of auction like alone, 10 there are Eastern. again thousands of sales in the U.S. every year. Within a 55, 50 mile radius of here, between 125 or 175 of them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is impossible for anyone to attend even a small percentage of all the thousands of auctions. We want to share in the kind of profits that are available it's, I'm really to excited these for government HTML. auctions and it is these programs. Another government program. The, is they're the like GSA. an hour each, and there's That's two the tapes General that I have. Services Administration. The reason that the GSA so they should, that should sells be that stuff is the GSA is the agency of government that acquires just about everything that the government uses. How does the government sell the things at the kind of stuff? That yeah, I wish I had the basic tape. The kind of prices that we've talked about, and I want to learn. Like, here's how you revolution open up Notepad. Over the fact that the government's basically giving type stuff an away. HTML tag That's in all caps. That's our tax dollars. That's how I learned. It's very simple. When the enabling legislation it is, passed, I think HTML three. Yeah. That they can only sell at fair market value. That's what we don't really need says. to see this guy's face. Does everybody know what fair market value is? <laughs> okay. Fair market value is that amount at Where's which my, a buyer will oh, buy keep losing OBS. and okay. a seller will sell. 
So the GSA has everything. They've got desks, they've got furniture, they've got Ollie North secretary's paper shredder. Okay, they've got everything. All over so North when reference. people see that the GSA Iran sells Contra, only at fair timely. market value, they get scared off because it says fair market value, and they don't even attend the auctions. Imagine the possibilities at an absolute auction. If no one shows up because there is no advertising, the two HTML tapes were stuck together, off, so they got kind of. But you are there. There was something sticky on them. X number of dollars. Also, I don't think the three, the free three and a half inch learning disc was included. Fair market value. So they've complied with the law, and you got yourself a real bargain. There are hundreds of sales annually we're gonna learn in this all these area things. where primarily personal property is being sold at sheriff's sales, for example. Discussing GIF versus JPEG, the two kinds of images. Who bought $50 trucks at a sheriff's sale? The trucks in Cincinnati for $50 each. A Cincinnati man who I'm extremely clo close with attended a Hamilton County Sheriff's My friend, William J. McCorkle. Hamilton County is Cincinnati, just sort of the way Duval County is Jacksonville. The auction consisted of three trucks filled with concrete forms. There's an assumption Is that true? Here. Is he right the about the county thing? Is that how counties work in Ohio? Forms on the job site at such and such a location. Know. We assume those trucks got there under their own power and the man was using them to make a living. This gentleman went to this sale. He told me, I got there at 10 a.m. on time and was the only one there. I asked when the auction would begin and was told, oh, when more people show up, I guess. He said, no way. It was scheduled for 10 a.m. It's 10 a.m. I'm here. We start now. Those are his rights. He bought them Go all. Go to government for auctions and be a bitch to the civil servants the working day. there. And you can make it rich. Okay. The only person holding you back is you. The United States Federal Marshal Sales. Someone here, we were talking earlier about U.S. Marshal Sales. You can there be a bitch to anyone. There are notices posted. There are two if you're not rich types. yet, you're just not no being enough of a bitch to enough to people. U.S. Marshal Judgment Sales. They are not necessarily good deals. Because after all, the debtor or the owner had a judgment against him and his personal property was not sufficient to raise the capital necessary to pay or to satisfy that judgment. So the creditor will usually bid on those items or on the entire estate. The second type, however, is a major drug seizure or criminal activity related sale. Confiscated goods become available at auction when one of three things happens. Number one, a conviction. And by that I mean the process of appeals has passed. Number two, a plea bargain. And number three, the defendant skips bail. There are difficulties and problems finding, about, finding out about these real opportunity auctions. The good news is the U.S. Marshal is required to post I like how he doesn't have a mic stand, so it just feels two, like he's making the world's worst places. wedding anybody toast. Those places are? Post office? Anybody else? That's correct. Oh, he's got to walk over to the Post overhead office. projector to change the slides. The bulletin bar board. New transparency, the please. In the courthouse or the federal building or in the po post office. You've seen them. Sure you have. What you've seen is a little thumbtack with a little corner of a torn piece of paper. How long do you think that notice stays up there on the bulletin board for people to see? I can tell you it usually gets ripped off within minutes. By whom? By William J. McCorkle. Someone who wants to be the only one at the auction. Thank you. Exactly right. Okay. There is a simple way to solve the problem. I'm not just giving you a hard time. Invent you the internet. For 24 so you hours can have more than when the eight people up, get the same phone number. And you can be the number. one who rips it off. Most of us don't find 24 hour a day guard duty Ooh. appealing at the post office. <coughs> William and Chantal McCorkle were charged place, in a multi count indictment with conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud, laundering money using fraudulently obtained credit cards, and using false social security numbers. That's amazing. That's simple enough. All we have to do is climb over the barbed wire fence, chloroform the Doberman, break into the warehouse, and bribe the U.S. Marshal of the Guards and check out the items. I wow. think you get the idea. The U.S. Marshal sales. I wasn't paying attention, out about. but he wants me to get the idea, and I think the idea is that we can be the most lucrative as well drug people with chloroform and break into places. You will learn how to find exactly where these unadvertised sales are, and I'll tell you later how come we know about them. 
but our simplified I think we have to break into the US post office how to find out about to get to the bulletin sales, board bankruptcy sales and chloroform and everyone unnoticed, so that we're the only ones that know about the auction and lightly attended government auctions and how to get the information about them and how to profit from them how many people like to travel what's the problem with travel i don't have my own you know, jet with my with name on it is that it costs money and when you spend that money that's after tax dollars everybody knows what i mean about after tax dollars your paycheck is your net so it costs you roughly 130 percent of your earnings but not when you're in the auction business these dod sales drmo army defense there are military bases all over the country you can get a stinger overseas. missile launcher <laughs> and at military installations overseas there's one very very interesting thing you and i if you are an American citizen, can attend any one of these auctions at military bases overseas. Foreign nationals cannot. There are many, many other government organizations besides DOD which hold these opportunity auctions. The SBA, Small Business Administration, confiscates whole businesses such as laundromats or pizza parlors and sells them at public auctions if their loans are not paid. Let's look at this business pro forma as an example of a laundromat. Here is a business which is appraised a $265,000 laundromat selling for 10 cents on the dollar with 10% down, $2,600 down. The laundromat is now netting $7,000 per month <laughs> after all My expenses, favorite financial statements are the ones that say living high on the hog at the end of them. Possibilities. It takes four months or excerpts from US from e. McCorkle. $7,000 and put $7,000 per month <laughs> living high on the hog is a great in hashtag. The HIP great National message. Bank every month after finding William and Chantal McCorkle guilty of laundering the proceeds of a fraudulent telemarketing forever? scheme. The jury returned a special verdict Forfeiting to the United States the McCorkle's interest in various assets. Oh my God, they got government auction seized. They got their a taste of their own medicine. Like the jury wanted them to be screwed over in that particular way. That's awesome. I mean, after all, how many of these things can there really be? Friends, I've got news for you. In addition to the 4,000 no longer living high on the hog. and court ordered sales, there are hundreds of U.S. bankruptcy sales alone every week. That's so poetic. I love it. How is it possible? How come you never hear about them? These things are not advertised in the newspapers. On the contrary, where is a bankruptcy sale held? Does anybody know? Bankruptcy sales are held generally in the feeding them to the wolves that they trained. Trustees. Generally, they are attorneys or businessmen who have become court-appointed bankruptcy trustees. And they usually hold the trustee sales right in their own offices. Well, who attends bankruptcy sales? They're not advertised, as I said before. On the contrary, the court does not produce any kind of catalog, listing, or mailing list. The bankruptcy trustee calls or notifies just the people involved, the creditors and the debtor, in the bankruptcy case. And those creditors It and is really amazing to think about the how the world has changed the since 1991. Informal back office like, sales. just the internet and how the availability an of information. Like you or me. Who doesn't know about these items or isn't a creditor? This is all about like that there is such a trustee sale. I mean, it's mostly if fraudulent and bullshit, but like up, are they it's luring people in on the themselves? the idea of like going to be you can corner bidding? information, you can have the information a lot of money? that no one else has. No way. A Chapter Seven trustee is not required because there was no website where this was published about sales. Notices are mailed only it's to just the a little flyer at the post office, and you Section three sixty three. Rule 2002 of the Federal Bankruptcy Code requires the coin appointed, appointed trustee to do only one thing, and I'm sure you've seen it. Ooh, new transparency. Ad, a legal notice in the newspaper. It says notice to debtors and creditors. Most people are neither the debtor nor the creditor, so they don't even know to get involved, much less how to get involved. 
91218 SMW Chapter 7 Finales Rebecca and Pedro 6107 Southwest What questions not easily Miramar, accessible? Florida, 33023, the information SS that they don't want you to know. W25797192052 file that is. 2691 Attorney NA <laughs> Need to know any more? <laughs> Notices of the actual sale are not posted or printed in the newspaper, just the notice of the case. When you see an advertisement in the newspaper saying, bankruptcy sale to the highest bidder, auction and so forth, so on and so forth, usually what has happened, like in the case of Eastern Airlines, the creditors have gotten together and in attempt to raise as much capital as possible to spread amongst themselves, they've hired a private auctioneer. That auctioneer is advertising the items to be sold at bankruptcy because he's going to get a commission. He sells the stuff after being taken from the bankrupt individual or the corporation. At this point, it's usually too late. For real bargains, you want to be involved with the trustee, not the private auctioneer. You can get personal property and real estate at a bankruptcy sale. All the debtors, luxury cars, and personal possessions are on the block. Everything from china and silverware to airplanes, tools, and everything imaginable at incredible prices. The really good deals are in the trustee's office. So if you can get personal property and real estate at these bankruptcy sales, what's the trick? The trick, obviously, is to find out about them. We have well-developed techniques to locate these sales, and our partners here will use those techniques. So they're selling you on the idea that this privileged information can make you rich, and they're basically the ones that are cars, which were the gatekeepers of the private information. He sold the cruisers it's a pretty classic to a wholesale con. auto dealer after a small amount of cleanup. You've got to take the insignia off the door and so on, okay? And he made big bucks. He reported to me it was pouring cats and dogs, and everyone except he and the auctioneer ran for cover. The next 12 cars he bought for 125 bucks each. He resold 10 of them for $19,200, and the last two were scrap. He sold them to a scrapyard, walking away with another $200 in his pocket. Total profit of $17,900. Not bad for a couple days' work. I'm proud to say yeah, this welcome. new institute is it Tote Man or very, very closely with us, and he's doing this very, very important. well. But it doesn't Thank have to be a big deal like a Rolls-Royce or a Boeing 737. Obviously, those are some of real exciting and attractive you things. You can get Taylor like Swift tickets at a government auction, and probably. And our dreams can become a reality. They've been seized from but someone. But a 17-year-old high school student told me that he went to one of these government auctions. You, too, can US obtain customers. sellable items for pennies and deal for dollars. brand-name toaster ovens in their original cartons. $2.33 each is what he picked up the ovens for. That's what his bid came out to, $187. He was a successful bidder. Anybody have any idea why he got such a tremendous bargain? There were three people there, okay? But the other two people didn't want, need, or think they had a use for 80 toaster ovens. One in your home, one in your office, one in your car, one in your garage. What are you going to do with the other 76 toaster ovens, okay? Make he a jam in them? over to the local flea market on the following weekend. He knew that they were selling at local you discounters can make jam in and any outlets kitchen for about appliance. $29 on sale. He turned around, he cut the price down by 50%, and he sold them for 15 bucks each. He did it in two weekends. Because his price was right... How many opportunities will be missed if you do not learn more about government auctions? Net cash profit. This is the kind of small, everyday type of opportunity. This is the kind of deal that anyone can afford. His total investment was $187. He slapped it down on the table, took them out, made cash. I don't know why they wasted all the time and money like renting those yachts and planes for William J. McCorkle to stand in front of and in the intro to this video. Opportunities. And the US Customs Office I wish they had just had William J. McCorkle proudly standing next to 80 toaster ovens. Would you believe that some people actually fail to declare imported items? Or fail to pay taxes and duties on items they bring into the country? What about things that are smuggled in or confiscated? The United States Customs Auctions, you'll find cameras, bags, watches, jewelry, electronics, whole container loads of consumer goods and almost anything and everything you can think of, including just about everything made in Japan by Sony, Hitachi, Mitsubishi, and names Hitachi. that we haven't learned to pronounce yet. Oh 
my God. These items can be obtained for pennies on the dollar and resold, again, at flea markets or to wholesalers, retailers, jobbers, all sorts of outlets with whom we at the Institute have ongoing business relations. I want a Hitachi Magic Wand. Customs. Willie From Nelson back. and Red Fox are not the only famous entertainers who have internal revenue problems. James Brown, soul singer James Brown, had his South Carolina Beach Island estate sold at public auction for $9,500. His 40-acre ranch with 3,500-square-foot vacation home, swimming pool, bathhouse, <laughs> two-car garage, kennels, and other buildings was appraised for tax purposes at $122,700. Luxury 40-acre ranch goes for 13 cents. On the dollar cents. Because there were only two bidders there. Dallas was one of two bidders who showed up at the auction at the Aiken County Courthouse, Quinn said. A handful of people watched, he said. I wouldn't buy a Brown Hitachi Magic Wand at auction. I would buy 80 of them. In addition, his Lincoln Continental, Mercedes-Benz, custom van, furniture, silver, and television sets went for only $17,500. Think about that opportunity that we all missed. Because of increasing drug seizures, that's internal revenue, because of increasing drug seizures, you'll find available through drug busts, DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, and Marshall Sales, custom vans, sports cars, luxury automobiles. Just to give you an example, we have auto dealers who unbelievably don't attend these auctions, and yet they will pay what they call wholesale or bank loan value, but what we, what we consider top dollar for some of these luxury cars, sports cars, custom, custom vans and limousines, $20 VCRs. $60 computers, $10 fishing trawlers, a shopper's dream. $60 computer. I can get a Raspberry Pi for cheaper than that. Mark Lewis stood Idiot. into a U.S. Marshal Service auction and bid $10 on a 65-foot fishing boat seized from drug smuggler smugglers. $10 going once, the auctioneer prodded 25 silent bidders. $10 going twice, nobody stirred. Sold for $10. Last summer, Lewis fished off the coast of New England with a trawler appraised $50,000. At thousands of such auctions each year, the government flushes out warehouses full of surplus and seized goods. Computers go for as little as $60. Ooh, throwing tomatoes is good. Swivel chairs for $3. That's really good. The government collects millions each year, but it should take in millions more. We got the, f the, the fun IRS, fact grabber. The United States Postal Service and federal bank insurers all contribute to the auction steals. The drug war has spiced the auction booty Throw with tomatoes. its own exotic I'm, I'm writing ideas. US TXT right and now. customs warehouses are swollen with more than $1 billion worth of seized cars, yachts, fur coats, diamonds, paintings, Rolex watches, portable phones, and other trappings of the drug trade. Yet at auctions, customs merchandise sells at prices far below its appraised value. At an auction in Jersey City, one bidder paid $1,200 for 960 pair of earrings. How long is this video? Let's necklaces, check, actually. 1,500 watch bands, 100 pair of sunglasses. Watch bands. Wa We're 27 minutes in. Let's take a look at it real quick. Okay. Here's what we've got. On the right side of the tape, the take-up reel, is the, um, the tape that we've watched already. And then on the left side is <laughs> the remaining tape. So it's going to be another, like, 30 minutes of this. Or, or we can learn about manners. Yeah, we're we're like halfway. The the reels are about equal equal. Manners, manners. I'm thinking manners. Yeah, we're all thinking manners. <laughs> manners or fraud? Which one do you want? Passes <laughs> and forty watches. Now that you know who these agencies are. Oh what? Turn to the back of volume one from your workbooks. Oh hold on. One through thirteen. Turn to the back of volume one to find out where some of these are located. We're getting more McCorkle. I can show you how to make even more incredible deals using my money in your spare time. Oh my God. Watch closely. This is the good life.
We invite you to join with us over the next few minutes and learn how you can become independently wealthy using a few well-tested... It's just replaying the same part. ...which will put you on the road to achieving your financial independence. It takes little or no money, requires no credit... Apparently this came with the workbook. can do it in their spare time. Just a few hours a month, that's all it takes. Stay tuned. Learn how to profit at U.S. government auctions of cars, oh my God. planes, jewelry, Woo. electronics, and other valuable That's really good. and real estate. And you can that was start an excellent right ghost. Away. Everyone comes to a point in their life where they either keep going down the same path they've always gone on, or they choose a new path, which can improve their way of life. They can continue, of course, on the, making the same amount of money that they've made month after month, or they can do something different. That's what I'm trying to offer you here today. You can invest just a little bit of money and a little bit of time and make much more money in the months to come than you've ever done with my system. When you find out how easy it is to use my system, you'll wish you heard about it months ago. When you receive my course, this is what you're going to receive. This oh my is God. a government auction package. It's very, very simple. This is the easiest method that you could ever find to make a lot of money to get you out of the situation you're yeah, in Yeah, so right this, now. Is, this is you the upsell, I guess. Beautiful cars like myself. I got a Lamborghini Diablo through these government auction packages. Oh, my God, it's the, Royce Corniche it's just the 90s version package. of that, uh, that does Tay, this. whatever it guy. It shows me freedom. It gives me an opportunity to purchase these things that <laughs> don't advertise government Good auctions. tomatoes. I got with Mr. Steve Steiner. We worked together. Uh, Lamborghini here. What we did oh, he did work with Steve Steiner. Steiner. The yep. smallest the places where only a few people are at. Of course, anybody spent 16 years in prison. I love of it. People showing up. I'm talking about taking you to an auction where you see three people. How are you going to like that? And we're going to get wonderful, wonderful items at that auction. You're going to be able to pick up some fantastic things for pennies on the dollar. But only when you learn what I've learned, which has taken years and years of Mr. Steiner's time to perfect these methods. And he has taught them to me and showed me to get beautiful things. And now I'm trying to teach you how you can do better your life. But not only am I going to better your life. I'm going to do something more importantly than that. I'm going to back you up. And in this agreement, it shows that I'm going to be there 100% to back you going up. going to be your it new best friend, writing, my name and William J. McCorkle. My name is on there. You find these deals, you oh, that the is, contract, that is, that is, that is not a binding agent, contract. Which means I am bound to you That's, for my money. Jesus Christ. Deals. And a lot of times, we have to send our money around the country before the sales even take That's place. That's not. How would you like that? You get a $50,000 check. How did he not think he was going to get indicted for fraud? But to be able to do that, I need a commitment from you. I'm going to charge you one low fee for this course, but I'm What's telling the fee, you it's going to change your life. What's the and fee? you've got my money behind you to guarantee it. It's not enough to know who these agencies are and where to find them. You have to know the right way to buy. Every successful bidder has a special strategy. You send me the Steve contract. Going to share with us some successful you get a techniques free ride in my rules. incredible roles. money. That is so simple, anyone can put together a winning deal. Our students are very, very successful. Steve Sands. Ex janitor okay, this sorry, this just got good. Dollars profit in one day. You know what's so great about these government auctions? I attended a drug seizure sale, bought a 300 SD Mercedes, paid fifteen hundred dollars for it. A dealer offered me ten thousand dollars for it. I turned him down. What's the first thing you look for? Number one, Aired. write this absolute down. Action. Absolute auction. I want you to write it down. If you haven't written anything down today, write that. Absolute auction. An absolute auction means that what is on the auction block will be sold. Okay, we're, we're going to skip Steve Steiner. I just want to see if there's more Willie McCorkle on this tape. <laughs> Look carefully My at specialty. only certain items and then concentrate only... Auctions are worth it for cars? Yeah, I... I uh... I assume this, this was like the point in time where if you wanted to drive a Crown Vic... You could get a pretty good Crown Vic on any street corner <laughs> police auction. And then everyone would hate you for driving a Crown Vic because they look in their rear view, they see a Crown Vic, and they have to stop speeding, even though it's not really a cop. You're oh, in right. sorry, we got Willie again. What do you got for us? Incriminate yourself, Willie. Oh, he's just doing this again. <sighs> Remember the young lady with army boots? If she had been a Girl Scout, Do you remember the young lady with army boots? She prepared. She would have made the whole thirty thousand dollars profit instead of only seventy five hundred. Are you going to be properly prepared? This is so. See you, Trill. Thanks Once for being you know here. The techniques on how to purchase, then you can start making real money. And the best part is, you don't have to spend a dime. I can show you how to make unbelievable deals using my money. This is the good life. 
We invite you to join with this us over the next the good few minutes life. and learn how you can become independently wealthy using a few well-tested proven techniques which will put you on the road to achieving your financial I got 251 It takes little or tax. no money, requires no credit, and anyone Did can do it. Did not know there were that many. Time. Thank Just you for compiling them. That's all it takes. Stay tuned. Learn how to profit you can at play U.S. Golf government with your new best friend, cars, William J. McCorkle. Electronics and other valuable personal property and real estate. And you can start right away. Everyone comes to a point in their life where they either keep going down the same okay, path it's the they've same always spiel. gone on. It's the same spiel about how there's a contract where William J. McCorkle is your friend. Of course, anybody says an auction, you think of hundreds of people showing up. I'm talking about taking you to an auction where you see three people. How are you going to like that? And we're going to get wonderful, wonderful items at that auction. Wait, You're Willie, are you going to take me there on your rolls? Sorry, this is, <laughs> this is different information now. It gives me an opportunity to purchase these things at little advertised government auctions. I got with Mr. Steve Steiner. We worked together on this, and what we did was we came up with the smallest places where only a few people are at. Of course, anybody says an auction, you think of hundreds of people showing up. I'm talking about taking you to an auction where you see three people. How are you going to like that? I love how he can't resist name-dropping Steve Steiner to make sure that he is equally incriminated. Pennies on the dollar, but only when you learn what I've learned, which has taken years and years of Mr. Steiner's time to perfect. Oh, wait, this is the same spiel. I just wasn't paying attention so last time because I was too busy doing hand motions. You how you can do better your life. But better not your life. only am I going to better your life, I'm going to do something more importantly than that. I'm going to back you up. And in this agreement, it shows that I'm going to be there 100% to back you up. It shows in writing my name and your name. We're on a contract. When you find these deals, you fill out the contract, you send it to me, you got my signature, which means I am bound to you for my money. Yeah, I mean a lot of a lot of aerial shots for planes, like small planes. It's relatively not that expensive to like fly a Cessna. But to be able to do that, I need a commitment from you. I'm going to charge you one low fee for this course. But Tell I'm us you, the it's fee. It's going to change your life, and you've got my money behind you to guarantee it. Cars, boats, planes, jewelry, and more for pennies on the dollar at little advertised government auctions in your area. How William and Chantel personally invest in your success by letting you buy high-ticket items using their money. William and Chantel. <laughs> no program offered on TV and no other seminar taught in America gives you this proven money-making information. I know you're ready to go out and buy and make some money. You know where to buy, how to buy. All you need to know is where you're going to get the money to buy. Let's go back to Steve and find out how you can make other people's money, your money, and make you Whoa. wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. Let's talk turkey. Steal from people. How do people. you get the money you need to back you up once you have the successful bid? Embezzle it you from your wealthy company. Relatives. How many people here have a wealthy relative that they can get all the money you want from? Let me see your hands. <laughs> Let's do fraud later. now. Okay. Are you ready to do fraud? Most of you don't, and I didn't think you would. Do you find an investor to finance you? How about your doctor, your attorney, friends, neighbors, business associates? Using their money, you can buy and sell various items. There are two successful techniques. Using OPM, other people's money, that's one of them. We buy and sell, and we make a profit with other people's money. But we have to have our financing in place and when we go to the auction, we can bid with confidence, knowing that when we are the successful bidder on that, I was so we close. We were for, so we close. The financial resources necessary to ending to this early. That item. And then William Our McCorkle showed up. Our profits program is a profit sharing agreement, oh which God. we both sign. And I'll put it. Oh, right it's up about the screen. contract. It's the oh, this is this is the fraudulent part. We got to stick around for the fraudulent part. In number one. In the joint venture auction agreement, after consulting with us, if it's not fun, hit the bricks. Location, you can leave date. contract lecture at any number time. Number two, you select the items to bid out of the catalog. Manners will be soon. We're and very close three, to manners. In most cases, you put 10% deposit down. We put up the rest. Handle the resale through our sources unless you already oh have God. an acceptable buyer. And the most important, uh, the most important part, folks, right down here. We split the profits 50-50. On page A12 of our workbook, you will find this agreement in writing in its entirety. The thing that is going to defraud we you. We authorize you to bid on our behalf at these auctions. It's an unlimited line of credit, folks. All you have to do is go, and we'll make money together. 
You can do a deal by deal. Fraud or manners. You can do a deal after deal, or you can go and buy these items yourself and take all the profits. You can't beat that with a stick. What if I don't have the 10%, you say to yourself? It could be a big ticket item. What if it's an airplane, a car, or a boat, and say the 10% is $1,000, and you don't have the $1,000 at the moment? We'll look at every one of these opportunities, and we'll tell you what to bid. If it's good enough, we'll come up with 100% of the money. You get 35% of the profit. All you have to do is go and go anywhere for these auctions. I don't care. This is Hawaii, such a, Berlin, such a Panama, con. <laughs> San Francisco, don't go to Baghdad. Okay? 1991, right people. Here. I want to see you making 10 or 15 times what you make on your 9 to 5 job. If we teach enough people in each city in the country, and then those people go out and attend the auctions, they attend the auctions, we put up 90% of the money, we can resell and split the profits 50-50. It's just like hindsight is 2020 and everything. It's right just interesting how like culturally partners all over the country. These guys were blazing we the trail of fraud of, money of like video based fraud. Profits program. It was so new that we people didn't recognize right how blatantly go out and fraudulent it is. Auctions, They're just saying like, here's our con that we're I know conspiring getting started making this money you'll be even more excited when I are show you, you a sucker a limited few of yeah you are partner, you're a sucker which is a fantastic deal this is the smartest well, he's very symmetrical now made. once you make a deal with me it's like a cookie cutter you can do it over and over and over again raking in the cash but you have to get moving because I'm only looking for a few people few motivated people hard-working people in your area this program gives you the knowledge to make profitable deals and I'm willing to be behind you 100% all you need is my money, and I'm willing to do that for you. When you become my partner, you're going to have my staff working around the clock to help you complete these deals. All of these money-making deals, but time is running out. So don't miss this opportunity of a lifetime to change your life. In fact, before you rewind this tape, go to the phone right now and call. Remember, I'm only going to work with a limited few of people in your area. So call right now. It's very this aggressive. Is the good life. We invite you to join with us over the next few minutes and learn how you can become independently wealthy using a few well-tested proven techniques which will put you on the road to achieving your financial independence. It takes little or no money, requires no credit, and anyone can do it in their spare time. Just a few Haley, hours that's he's just doing the BSL alphabet, Stay right? Tuned. Learn how to profit at U.S. government auctions of cars, boats, planes, jewelry, electronics, and other valuable personal property and real estate. And you can start right away. Everyone comes to a point in their life where they either... Okay, Willie. ...more money in the months to... Okay, Willie. What else we got? Anything? We're very near the end. We're so close. I think we crossed zero at like 30 minutes, and this is probably an hour through this government auction package what that does for me is this it shows me freedom it double speed I'm Willie McCorkle give me your money I'll take it And then, eh, I don't know. You know I'm going to be there behind you. But to be able to do that, I need a commitment from you. I'm going to charge you one low fee for this course. But I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. And you've got my money behind you to guarantee it. This is the time for you to take He's got a Rolls Royce. I need you to the phone and order my course. It's going to change your you life. You can trust a man now with a Rolls Royce. You to start getting out and of a boat with his name right on it. So and a plane a with his name on it. Up. You've got a little nice house. You've got a nice car. I want you to drive exotic cars, have beautiful houses. I want and a you lot of money to take a vacation whenever you want to one. mortgage your take home and me. give I'm me the money. You, when you go to these government auctions, you'll find items for yourself you're going to love. And not only that, you're going to be able to sell these items and make a huge profit for you and me. And then we'll be able to vacation together if you want to. Oh, my I God. I forward to personally talking to you soon because I'm going to be in your town. Parasocial so relationships right I'm here, 1991 style. And I'm going to have dinner at your house. I can't wait to meet with you. And I want to thank you for watching this videotape. And I'll talk He's to you He's so aggressive about having dinner at your house. I'm going to have dinner at your house. 
Yeah, there's um, there's a lot there. <laughs> Good music though. <sighs> we did it. This was the first tape where we um used the <laughs> used the fast forward function of the VCR liberally. And I think that was a good call. It's Willie and Chantel. <laughs> good on you, Bella Bunny. Uh, I always pull my Lamborghini directly up to the airplane hangar and park it at an attractive angle next to the plane. Well then, that was William J. McCorkle's government auctions. I can go ahead and update the spreadsheet because that was roughly an hour in 1991-ish. So now that'll just automatically update on the website. It's, it's fun. I, I put all the tape information in a Google spreadsheet and then it just automatically syncs it over to the website. Yeah, what was William J. McCorkle trying to get from us? Like, I mean, I know what he was trying to get from us, our money, but how much? Yeah, um, do, do you feel emboldened and empowered? <laughs> this was all just a ploy for him to make... <laughs> to get dinner at people's houses. <laughs> I want to be your friend. I'm William J. McCorkle. Why won't anyone talk to me? Yeah, I think manners is a good call. Oh, wait. Hold on. There we go. Um, clear that tape. Look, Mom, I have good manners. Yeah, de definitely need a detox after that one. I'm trying to keep it, like, you know, trying to keep it varied with these more variety streams where we watch shorter tapes. Like, we got Breadman, bread baking. We got Kittens and Caboodles. We got William J. McCorkle's Government Options. And now, I think a good, um, instructional preachy video to kids but i don't think this one's overtly christian look mom i have good manners withdrawn from the jefferson county public library of liquid colorado where does your napkin go do you have to share all your toys feel free to read this while i grab the tape tape number 89 Yeah, Kittens and Caboodles was, was pretty good. Look, Mom. I have good manners. Interactive, fun, and entertaining. We've got... Phoneman. We've got... Talk Boy and Talk Girl. And we have Playground Girls. Questions are asked and answered in five major categories, including mealtime, playtime, telephone, school, and healthy manners. Kids will want to keep score and watch this interactive program over and over again while they learn fundamental and necessary manners. Standalone mics of the sound of tape. Yeah, the, I noticed that in the last stream that the, the mic is kind of loud. I just need a, I need a mute button. I need to just bind that to a key and remember to press it as a first step. I do. I did when I was doing other um, when I was doing these sorts of streams earlier on the other channel. I had a desk, a mic on my desk, um, 
And then my good friend Stephen George, who has audio equipment laying around his house, gave me this headset, which is very nice of him. Uh, and, and it's much nicer not to have to like lean on, make sure I'm positioned right next to the mic. I felt like it was screwing up my posture. So I definitely, I like the headset, but yeah, I, I need a mute button. <laughs> Jefferson County Public Library. Discover the possibilities. Please use great care in handling these cassettes. The borrower is responsible for returning cassettes, or borrower, if you're from Wisconsin. Please rewind the tape. Please rewind the tape. Okay. Is the tape rewound? The tape isn't rewound! Oh my god. Ah, <sighs> well, let's go ahead and do that. I do need a tape rewinder so I could be rewinding things while while we're learning about fraud. I've noticed this um, this VCR it, it fast forwards very very quickly, but it seems like the rewind doesn't go as fast. The, cor the correct pronunciation of uh, that's too bad we don't have polls we can never find out which is correct <laughs> borrow or borrow let's see Ah, if you if you really do want to contribute a rewinder, <laughs> you're, you're welcome to. I would appreciate that, although you certainly don't have to. I feel bad taking things from people. Um, if we go to goldenvcr.com, you, you brought up the P.O. box. That's a good thing to mention. If I go to goldenvcr.com slash contributions, I have a P.O. Box myself, actually. So, I mentioned this last stream, but anyone who wants to, if you have access to or know of um, tapes that you think would be fun to watch on stream, uh, you can mail them in and I'll, I'll add them to the collection at my discretion. You know, obviously I don't, there's no sense in sending in like Disney movies on cassette or whatever, because that I'm not gonna, touch those with a 10-foot pole. And anyway, I'm looking for more of like obscure, weird promotional, educational stuff, um, or like TV recordings, whatever. Um, so yeah. Well, thank you, Toast Grandchild. That's very, very kind of you. I'll send some uh, Golden VCR fun points your way. Speaking of which, does anybody want Golden VCR fun points? while we're waiting for this tape to rewind. Oh yeah, Toast Grandchild is getting a lot of points. Okay, thanks for attending broadcast. Yeah. Actually here, I can do this to make it more interactive. <laughs> C.S. Moore, thanks for the follow. Oh, no, no one's now's now and darns. Manners, now with less fraud. <laughs> Thank you for that. This is my very janky admin UI. It doesn't have to look good because it's only for me. Uh, okay, who asked for points? Don't, don't, don't say it again. I have chat pulled up. Um, points, points, points. Okay. Hold on. Jacebook, you get a points. 
Mr. Nintendo console, you get a points. Cosmic. Searle, you get a points. And you get a points. And the Bella Bunny. And Sapphire Becca. The Yost. Sacademus. Genesis. The Kubliest. You can have extra. Because I like you. Lost Vagabond. If it's not fun. Sombra Noir. Storms. I think our tape is done. <laughs> Y'all want to watch Manners? Kiwi Lee Scipio. CS More 11. Mr. Death Kiss. The most thrilling part of the stream is where you watch me type names. Fire Luigi 64. Aaron the Baron. Ember Laura. I will refrain so as not to add to the list. Screw you. Have some points. Best digital media. And one, four, four. Okay, that's, 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 that's it. Enjoy your points. Where were we? <laughs> manners? I have manners. It's in the VCR. Let's go. Hopefully the ghosts won't be broken forever. It was working a little bit before. Whoever gets in there before it times out can, uh, can submit something. Uh, real quick, I just need to go to the website again. Go to tapes. And manners activate. And here we go. We are fully rewound and ready to watch. Look, Mom, I have good manners. Maybe you'll learn how to thank me for the points. You're all very kind and very grateful, and I appreciate you being here. Thinkaroo.com. Way cool science. Oh my god, these look great. Agatha Christie, The Scoop, You Solve It VCR Mystery Game? Absolutely something that I would <laughs> that I would uh, do on the channel. <laughs> And girls, get ready to play the exciting new game show, Look, Mom, I Have Good Manners, with your host, that mild-mannered, social-savvy etiquette expert, Willie Duray. Oh, Willie. Another Willie, damn it. Thank you. Welcome to Look, Mom, I Have Good Manners. Is this too loud? Let me know how the audio is on this one. Well, in the next I refuse to put a compressor on this. I want the raw audio signal. And your etiquette skills. And at the end, add up your score and see if you can honestly say, Look, Mom, I have good manners. Today, you'll compete in five categories. Meal also a Willie who talks with his hands. Telephone manners. Playtime manners. School manners. And healthy manners. 
We're ready for round They're clearly one. going so for like a 90s Nickelodeon first category, Mike Summers vibe. Mark matters. Summers vibe, I mean. And our first question worth Yeah, he does have huge eyeballs. Is about napkins. Whether they're made from paper or cloth, napkins can really help out when eating gets a little uh, messy. <laughs> but when you sit down to eat, where do the napkins go? Here are your choices. A, around your neck to protect your shirt from saucy splatters. B, on the table for quick and easy wipes around your mouth and chin. Or C, on your lap because food can slip off your fork. The correct answer is C, on your lap. <laughs> These seem kind of subjective. You what if you're eating crawfish? You place the napkin on your lap. It'll protect you from spills, and it's a quick motion from your lap to your mouth. If I'm eating crawfish, I'm going bib, baby. If you got the question right, give yourself five points. If you were wrong, you've got zero. Okay, remember, everyone keep track of your points. That's not good manners. We're on the honor system okay. here. You'll need a keen eye for this next question. Take a close look at this and see if you can decide which Ooh, an etiquette book for proper women. This person is breaking. <laughs> Haley loves etiquette books for proper women. <laughs> okay, for another five points, what rule is this person breaking? Is it A, he's using the wrong fork? B, he's talking and chewing food at the same time? C, he's breaking no manners rules at all. I mean, he is stabbing a fork at you while he's talking to you, which is also rude. B, talking and chewing. But yeah, thank you, for, thank you, Tate, for showing us this. This is a rule for obvious reasons. No one likes to see food or hear food being mashed up in your mouth. It's hey. disgusting. Hey. So instead, you like see food? Chew your food with your mouth closed and avoid talking until after you've swallowed your food. If you got that question correct, give yourself another five points. Here's another five-point question. Which of these is an acceptable behavior at the dinner table? A, blowing bubbles. B, making a mashed potato mountain. Seems fine. C, creating works of art on your plate. <laughs> or D, I pray to the carrot temple. The well, the answer is D, none of the above. Playing with your food is never acceptable behavior. Combining your peas and mashed potatoes, an American tradition for a hundred years, is apparently not acceptable anymore. This is what the world is coming to. These woke globalists don't want you to put peas in your mashed potatoes anymore. nine years old, and she says she's a regular... Miss Manners around the house. Well, today we put her table manners knowledge to the test in a game we like to call Play Setting Challenge! <laughs> Janet, are you ready to play Play Setting Challenge? Yes. Well, <laughs> she's really <laughs> she's really matching his energy there. Need to do a simple okay, okay. play setting for dinner. And I do stress a simple okay. play setting. You'll have 30 seconds to arrange the plate, fork, knife, spoon, napkin, and, and glass in the proper position on the table. Thus, the name of the game, Place Setting Challenge! <laughs> Janet, are you ready? Start the clock. What would you like to be an alert one day? Know me bookworm? I need to add it to ideas.txt. Okay, she's really screwing this up. Uh, sorry, Come on, Janet. Janet, that's not quite right. You have a few seconds left. Can you fix it in time? Sure. Okay, viewers at home, this is the setting Janet has come up with. Do you think it's right or wrong? Choose correctly and you'll receive five big points. The glass is two and a half inches too far away hand. from the plate. <laughs> plate in the middle, correct. Napkin and fork to the left, correct. 
Glass to the right. Perfect. Knife and spoon to the right. That's right. However, there is something technically wrong with this place setting. You see, the knife blade is facing the wrong way. The knife blade should always be facing the plate. Sorry, Janet, you did the not... The deadly sharp the blade of the <laughs> butter knife. <laughs> How did you do at home? If you thought Janet set the table incorrectly, give yourself <laughs> five points. And don't feel bad for Janet because no one on Look, Mom, I have good manners is a loser. Frank, tell Janet what she's won. Janet's going home with a year's supply of thank you notes. As we all know, every gift you receive requires a thank you note. Thank you notes should be sent 24 hours after receiving a gift. Thank you notes should be entirely perfunctory. And now, another five point question in the category Mealtime Manners. Sending thank you notes is wonderful. It's the thing the you should do. And you'd like some more mashed potatoes, which are but it's really wild to <laughs> mandate it to your what children. Should you do? A. Ask someone to pass the potatoes. Mom, please pass the potatoes. Thank you. B. Reach over and get them so you don't bother Mother did not else. respond verbally with the correct C, response. Nothing. Asking for seconds. Which is, yes, my child, thank you rude. for asking. What do you think? Do you know the answer? The correct answer is... A. Are they drinking A milk with their dinner? Yeah, passed. I mean... Because reaching for food is not I'm someone who had to drink a tall, icy cold, 20 ounce glass of milk with every meal growing up from the time I was like four. Give yourself five points. 90s parents really got conned by the milk industry. All right. The next question has to do with elbows. Yeah, I'm a milk hater now because of that. Ever said this? Elbows on the table. Are elbows ever allowed on the table? Yes. Or no? It's a tricky question, but the answer is yes. Elbows are allowed on the table when everyone is finished eating. Give yourself five points if you said yes. This is bullshit, man. These are all trick questions. Hey, that sound means it's time for the big bonus question. This question is worth a whopping five points. What's the topic of the bonus question? It's mysterious food. Sounds mysterious. Listen, children have to be trained right so that when you send them to the manor of the local lord to earn their keep, they'll do things correctly and not shame your family and get fired. It's what we call mysterious food. <laughs> what should you do? Should you A, poke and prod the food in an effort to figure out what Oh, Bella Bunny, I don't think we're going to get into, like, relative... <laughs> <laughs> attitudes toward what's culturally acceptable. You see? This seems very um mysterious food to the family dog. Like it's going to be pretty ethnocentric. What shows good manners? Think about it. The correct answer is B. I never had this before. I just came in to try it. Oh no. Now, unless you think the food may bite you or inflict bodily harm, it's always best to have a positive attitude and be gracious. I'm starting to get errors from my own if you API. The question right, give yourself like a from the thing that's points. running the chat and alerts for I this stream. Have been tough, so let's take a break for these words. We'll begin round two. So I think maybe I need to start mom, scaling. Good manners right after this. Maybe I can't blame OpenAI. This open AI. portion of Look Mom, I it's have fine. Good Manners is brought to you by Please and Thank You. When you ask for something, say please. And when you receive something, say thank you. <laughs> please and thank you. The ultimate in good manners. Serving mankind for hundreds of years. I'm running several HTTP servers and Nginx okay, and a Postgres back. server and on a single digital ocean food. droplet. It's six dollars a month. Do well with mealtime manners, don't worry. You can earn some really big points here in round two. We really got to get, we got to talk to Brandon about this API issue. I re, we got to, we got to, we got to, and we definitely can't just send Brandon an email. We're going to need to schedule a meeting with Brandon. Our first question has to do with manners on the playground. Watch this. There's a line of kids waiting to use the slide and you haven't had a turn yet. 
What shows good manners? A. Go to the back of the line and wait your turn. B. Cut in the front and slide down quickly. C. Threaten to beat everyone up if they don't let you go down first. C. For five points, what's your answer? That's an easy one. A. Go to the back of the line and wait your turn. Yeah, these, the goofiest options here are decent, but th I wish they weren't so tame. I want to see a, like, a legit shot of kids fighting each other. Watch this and choose which response shows good manners. You've been playing all day at your friend's house, but it's time to go home. The room is a mess and toys are everywhere. What does a person with good manners do? A. Say thanks for playing and go home. Thanks for playing. I gotta go. <laughs> or B. I gotta go, but I'll help you clean up first. Okay. Did you get this one? B is incorrect. You said B, you are absolutely correct. Verbal assurance that you will Good clean up is not enough. That if you make a mess, you should always help to pick it up. Oh, that rug. That's worth five points. The play rug. Ooh, that sound means it's time for the Brain Buster question of the day. Welcome to the stream, Mal, and everyone else who's joining. We have we are... two contestants to play Brain Buster. Let's see. And they are Brian and Chelsea. We're watching Look Mom, I Have Good Manners. requires a sharp mind and intuition. So pay close attention, and here's the question. Annie has a brand new toy that's very special, and she doesn't want anyone else to play with it. Before her friend comes over to play, she hides her special toy in the closet. Was that a nice thing for Annie to do? No, that was not a nice thing to do. You should share all your toys. Chelsea, what do you think? What Annie did is okay. You don't have to share everything. If you have something special that you don't want to share, it's a good idea to put it away. Okay, viewers. Definitely at home. going with Annie on this Who's one. That's right. Brian or Chelsea? Well, or Chelsea. the correct response came from Chelsea. It's true. Sharing is important, but you don't have to share everything. <laughs> if you agreed with Chelsea, Give yourself five. See so ya, yeah, Espamos. Thank points. you for being here. Right now, let's take a break and listen to these important words. This portion of Look Mom, I Have Good Manners is brought to you by the words Excuse Me and In the font I'm Comic sorry. Sans. Excuse Me and I'm Sorry, making the world a nicer place to live. Okay, we're back. And ready to continue in round oh, two. Oh, sorry. Playtime manner. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Our topic is good sports. This is Hank, and this is Mike. They're playing a basketball game for the championship of the entire world. As you watch them play, listen to what they say and decide whether they're acting like good sports or poor sports. Here we see Mike going for a layup, and he scores. Hank says, You're winning because you're cheating. How do you cheat at basketball? Accuse Mike of cheating. Is Hank being a good sport or a poor sport? If you say poor sport, you're right. You're taking That's steroids. Points. Good sports never accuse or make excuses when they lose. Hey, Fossix, thanks for following. Hank dribbles back and takes a shot from far away. He scores. Mike says, Hey, nice shot. Is Mike being a good sport or a poor sport? If you said a good sport, then give yourself another five points. Good sports congratulate one another for good play. Good sports never put down other players. Let's watch the last scene. That's a terrible dribble. Oh, what a shot! I'm the best! I'm the best! <laughs> Is Hank being a good sport or a poor sport? If you said a poor sport, you are absolutely right. Good sports don't prance around or boast or brag. Only poor sports... We do make an exception for the Lambo Leap. That correct. 
give yourself another five points. Otherwise, no grandstanding. And finally, in the Playtime Matters category, watch this. Kathy invites Beth to her house to play. Who gets to choose what to play? A. Kathy, because it's her house. Or B. Beth, because she's the guest. The correct answer is... B! There's so many dings. You should always let your guest choose what to Some play. of these dings aren't even that timed up to anything. Two. We'll be back right after <laughs> these words. This lady portion chat. of the program is brought to you by the word respect. When you're visiting someone's house, we it's couldn't get the rights to Aretha Franklin. Things. That means no hopping on the sofa or touching but things. But enjoy this asking. MIDI tune. Respect, making the world a better place to live. Okay, we're back, and we're ready for round three. <laughs> Telephone manners. Yeah. Let's see what you know. Watch. This I think it's a an eternal law that of nature that anything that was sincere 20 years ago will eventually feel like satire today. Yeah. Hold on. Mom. Mom, it's the phone. You gotta cover the mouthpiece before you yell. Okay. What did Amy do wrong? It's okay to yell, just cover the mouthpiece. She didn't yell loud enough for her mom to hear. B. She used the tell by yell technique. C. She didn't let the phone ring long enough. What do you think? Ooh, you gotta let the phone ring longer. If you said B, you're absolutely one. You need, you need telephone right. negging. Tele Make them think you don't actually care about their call. Not a good way to let someone know they have a phone call. <laughs> the She's the informal nice. mom instead of it mother. Hurts the phone caller's ears, and boy, does I get mom <laughs> mad. So when you answer the phone and it's not for you, don't tell by yell. <laughs> Get up and leave the room and find the person to let them know the phone call is for them. Okay, we now have two contestants, Janet and Max, to compete in what we call When the Phone Rings. People don't say bye anymore on the phone? I always say Here's bye. How we play. The phone will ring and each Usually I say love you, bye, even when I'm like talking to the cable company the representative. <laughs> If you're ready, or like, let's begin. Thank you, let's bye. When I'm talking to first call. an automated what phone you system. When you answer the phone. Hello. Moshi moshi. Hello, this is Max. Okay, who answered the phone correctly? Was it A. Janet, B. Max, or C. Both Janet and Max. Janet said. Hello. Pretty sure just saying hello. Hello and is his name. A and normal way to answer the phone. Right. So Yay. He said C. Give yourself five points. Very good players. Now let's see what happens when the phone rings and it's the wrong number. Hello. Hello, is Ernie there? There's no Ernie here. Is that boy wearing a wedding ring? Hello, is Ernie there? There's no Ernie here. What number did you dial? 555-4321. Sorry, that's not my number. Bye. Okay, the phone rings. It's the wrong number. Do you think Max did the right thing by hanging up? Or did Janet do the right thing by asking what number he dialed? Did they, was that a dubbed line? If you said Janet did the right thing, you're right. It's rude to just hang up. Give yourself five points. Here's the last telephone question. I disagree. Hello? Yeah. Hello, this is Mrs. Jones. May I please speak to your Once mom? it's clear that it, they've you're called the wrong number. Right now, but I'll tell her you called. You, may, you let them know that, and then you end the awkward situation as Hello, quickly as possible Jones, so that neither of you mom? has to feel bad. Oh, hi, Mrs. Jones. My mom can't come to the phone right now. Can I take a message? Okay. Let me write this down. Okay, who did the right thing, Janet or Max? If you said Janet, you just earned another five points. This guy points. is so emphatic. If you like the phone and the person they're calling for. This is like the home, it's important to late write '90s down children's if you videotape you could version of YouTube personality. Problems for everyone. Thank it's you very for over the top. 
Manners help people to act polite and do the right thing, but manners also help to keep people healthy. So, our next category is healthy manners. The first question in this round has to do with picking your nose. Let's go for it. Why is picking your nose not a healthy or polite thing to do? A. The stuff you pick out of your nose has germs on it. B. The germs can get on your hands. C. It's gross to watch. D. All of the above. If you said D, oh. all of the above, Receiver. that's worth five receive. points. If something is stuck in your nose and you have to get it out, do it in private. That's the polite thing to do. Here's another five-point question. Watch this. In addition to picking his nose, name three other things this person does that are gross and unhealthy. <coughs> Did you see? Well, your possible correct answers are biting fingernails Dumb and burp. spitting them out, Picking Always it, swallow earwax when, you pick, from his when you bite your fingernails. Sticking gum under the chair and burping. Let's face it. You should be a good citizen no and pick gum off of the chairs and, and eat it pinching their bodies to get rid of it. Have to listen to strange and disgusting body noises. It's unpleasant and nasty. Give yourself five points. Now here's another five-point question. You're at a party and you're eating chips with dip. Is it okay to take a bite, then dip the same mm. chip again? Yes Scandalous. Or no? What do you think? The correct answer for five points is no, it's not okay. It's not healthy, and it's bad manners. You see, double dipping is just like licking the salt off of the chips and placing the chips back in the chip bowl. Yuck! <laughs> Here's yeah. the question. When you cough or sneeze, germs come flying from your body. So the proper thing to do is A, cover your mouth and nose, then wipe your hands on your pants. B, cover Who has your elbow mouth and nose, been invented yet? Wash your hands. I don't. Haley gets on my case about not sneezing into my elbow don't all the time. Cover up. It's the best way to let the germs fly away. What do you think? Of course it's B. Cover your mouth and nose. Yep. But be sure to watch Yep, we didn't have See, this is proof. This is proof for Haley. At this point in history, we had not learned about elbow sneeze. Correct. Give yourself a Sorry, I always sneeze into my hand and then Yeah. And that's the end of round. Yeah, this looks pretty early 2000s. round 5 right after these words. Teasing and calling names. It's not nice and it's bad manners. Okay, we're back for round five and the category school. Manners. It's true, it's true. I need to adapt. It's just hard to fight the muscle memory. School manners. Things you need to know in the classroom. Let's start for five points. You're in class and know the answer to a question. You should A. Shout it out so everyone can hear you. I know, I know, 365. B. Jump out of your seat and wave your arms so the teacher can see you. I know, I know. C. Raise your hand first to let the teacher know you know the answer. The sensible answer is C. Raise your hand. This way, one person can speak at a time, and it's way better. Okay, but is it okay to sneeze okay. into your the dip gives you at a, a party? To take to the office. As soon as you leave the room, you a run down the hall for quick delivery. B walk down the hall. C stop and get a yeah, drink D, at every water fountain. Being paralyzed by. Well, Anxiety about embarrassment answer. and not raising your you hand is a pretty good one. Run in the hallways. Give yourself five points if you chose B. 
Now, the next question. You finish your work and you want to draw, but you have no paper. Is it okay to draw on the desk? Yes or no? For five points, the answer is... Use your pocket knife and whittle no. into the desk. Writing or drawing on desks ruins the school's property. And ruining property is bad manners. Here's the next question. Totally ruined. You're in school and forgot your pencils. Should you A. Ask to borrow a pencil. B. Look through someone else's desk to find one. C. Throw a tantrum. Well, for five points, the answer is... Of course, kids who are throwing tantrums are Ask always doing so pencil. as you a premeditated someone else's desk thing. Permission. It's important to follow rules They're just mistaken. School, so they just weren't learn, properly taught that throwing a tantrum isn't the correct thing too. to do in that situation. So, when you go to school, obey the rules. And that's the end of round five. We'll enter the manners speed round right after these words. Shut up! So what? Who cares? Huh? Avoid Never say huh. They demonstrate bad manners and lack of respect for others. If the word huh leaves your mouth. Okay, we're back. Are you going to hell. ready to rack up some big points? Then let's play the manner speed round. Oh my god, he's his own mascot for this. In this round, questions we'll be asking will come from lots of different categories, so pay close attention. And remember, each correct answer is worth five points. Here we go. When you approach a door, you should only hold the door wide open for people going in, never going out. True or false? The answer is false. You should hold doors wide open for people going in or out. Here's the next question. When meeting new Slam people, it in their face. you should A. Say nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. You too. B. Grunt. Nice to meet you. <laughs> C. Ignore them. Nice to meet you. The correct answer is A. Say nice to meet you. You should try to gaslight and psychologically manipulate everyone at school. It's good practice. or false? False. You should never slurp your soup. Oh, slurping is bad under all circumstances. When the door opens, you should... In the one culture that there is. Push your way in to make sure you get on first. Or B. Wait for passengers to get off, then step in. Of course, the answer is... <laughs> nice to meet you. Fine weather we are having. Would you like to come to the park and sit on the old lady bench with me? It's just common sense. If you got that correct, give yourself another five points. That's it. The game is over. How did you do? How many points did you... Well, who was keeping track of their score? If you scored between zero and 50 <clears throat> points, you need to watch this program several more times. Between 51 and 100 what a punishment. points, you're civilized what a and you're on your way to having really good... Oh my god, it's the scoring system of the peg game at Cracker Barrel. You can honestly say, look, Mom, you're an igno Ray moose. Manners. Remember, manners are more than just a set of rules to follow. Manners help you to get along better with other people. Manners help you to know what to do and say in different situations. And that helps to build confidence. And when you're not sure what to do, follow the golden rule, which is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In other words, treat people the way you want to be treated. That's what manners is all about. Have you learned anything? The Mazzarella Brothers. Thinkaroo. Get kids thinking. They're, uh, the science tapes that they promoted at the beginning looked more interesting than this. But I'm glad we learned about manners.
I think that was it. How many, yeah, how many straight to VHS tapes like this have been made? It is my goal to find out. Yeah, grunting is bad, saying huh is bad. Double dipping your chips is bad. If, um, if someone calls and they have the wrong number, there's a certain script you have to follow. You say, there's not an Ernest here. Regardless of what name they ask, you say, there's no Ernest that lives here. May I ask what number you called? And then you wait for them to say the number. And then you say, that is not the number of this residence. And then you give them a brief lecture on how the telephone network works and suggest that maybe they need to call one of the local switching offices to figure out if some wires got crossed or perhaps redial. And then you wish you, you ask them how they're doing, because it's impolite to just hang up. You, you, you have to ask them how they're doing, ask them about their day, you know, listen to them for 20 minutes or so, ask how their kids are doing. Um, and then when, once the conversation feels like it's reached a natural stopping point, then you say goodbye, thank you for calling. And you wish them well on calling the person they actually wanted to call. And if someone calls for your mom, yeah, don't yell at your mom. <laughs> Hunted VCR. Beautiful. Yeah, the computers are still learning what a VCR is. Oh my god. You gotta call... You got a call from your dad's secret ex-wife? Who, like, revealed that information after finding out that you who you were? <laughs> That's wild. I'm not sure I like that story for you. Well, yeah. <laughs> Did we clear the tape? All right. So I think, I think that's probably gonna be it for tapes today. I know somebody, somebody mentioned Space Shuttle earlier. That might be another good kids one. Um, Steven's doing Starfield shortly. So yeah, if you're, if you're in the Starfield gang, go watch that. Um, we There was some interest in um, painting the lighthouse. And I really want to see that. It's an acrylic painting tutorial. I don't know if, <laughs> Mal, if you're interested in ever seeing that. Uh, we can hold it for you. There's also Folk Art One Stroke Video Library Series Volume 2, How to Paint Basic Fruits and Animals, featuring Donna Dewberry. I don't know what plaid is. Yeah, I get to rip off all of my friends' streaming concepts. It's great. <laughs> so painting the lighthouse, we might we might do soon. I think we we will have to do longer ones because some of these are long. And the point the point of these streams is the vibe, you know. Both like. Yeah, Fast Jets is on my list, too. I think Fast Jets would be a good good one to start with one of these streams. Oh, okay, we will do. Yeah, Make Mine Milk... Um, let's see. Make Mine Milk is one that... You know, now that I'm using this website a lot, I do feel like being able to alphabetize it and stuff would, be, would actually be nice. Um, but yeah, Joshy Deason and Make Mine Milk... Uh, for which he was handsomely rewarded with Golden VCR Fun Points. And so I'm waiting for him to be available for a stream or to watch the milk propaganda because it looks pretty good. Yeah, Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe, The Golden Books, Beauty and the Beast. 
Thomas sent in Tobor the Eighth Man, so we have to we have to watch that with Thomas. The problem as I'm going through these tapes here on on stream is I'm doing this in o an OBS browser source which does not have a back button, <laughs> so it makes it a little harder to navigate. Is Green Man live? Oh, excellent. Cool. We can we we can raid the countdown. But yeah, um, painting the lighthouse is a good one that I want to watch soon. And also, um, oh yeah, Tai Chi for health looks pretty neat. I might actually like do this on some weekend stream when I want when I feel like doing a bunch of Tai Chi. Uh, and then, what else did we have? HTML. I think, I think uh, HTML, Teach Yourself HTML 3.2 is going to be a good one for um, Saturday. I think I might stream Saturday at 10 Eastern, learn some HTML, and then maybe, um, I forget what time... Steven said he and Haley are doing Mario RPG, but we can we can raid raid into that one if we're still streaming. Living high on the hog. Living high on the hog is good. All you have to do is some basic fraud, and you can live high on the hog like William J. McCorkle. And yeah, final final shout out here for goldenvcr.com slash contributions if you want to send in tapes that's where you can find the uh, address oh <laughs> what have we here do you want to bring forth the dog <laughs> oh I didn't wear pants for this stream. <sighs> We're both wearing PJs. I sleep in this shirt. Okay. Thank you all for being here. Uh, see you again if you want to tune in this Saturday around 10-ish. We'll be here. I'll, I'll update the schedule on Twitch so it's readily available. Uh, and yeah, let's go raid the Stephen George countdown timer with hashtag living high on the hog. If there were alternate hashtags, alternate raid messages that I've forgotten, Feel free to use them. Raid? Raid now. 61 viewers are ready to raid. Okay. Bye.